Wanna go around? What's going on, Kaz? We've got guests. Time to move. Don't worry, it's not our friends from Langley. I brought him, made sure we won't follow. Thank you, Big Boss. Call me Snake. Oh, uh, uh, sorry, Big Boss. <sighs> Listen up. For us, there is no victory. But in revolution, doesn't one triumph or die? We don't do either. like a new man. There's no coffee like Costa Rican coffee. So, what brings a distinguished scholar from the Costa Rican government to Colombia? Professor Galvez comes from Costa Rica's University for Peace. You see, over the past year, there have been sightings of an armed group in Costa Rica. They're not ours, of course. Costa Rica doesn't have an army. Correct. Article 12 of our Constitution states that the army as a permanent institution is abolished. The Peace Constitution. You think it's rebels who fled Nicaragua? No, no. They don't appear to be guerrillas. They're far too organized. What's your government's take? The authorities in San Jose claim it's a multinational security firm, hired by the Development Corporation of Costa Rica. Lies, obviously. They're bringing in state-of-the-art weaponry and equipment by the shipload. Where'd they get that kind of cash? I fear La Cia may be involved. The CIA? As you both know, the United States views Central America as its backyard. Even after Cuba, we've managed to maintain a delicate balance with the U.S. And your government can't just give them the boot. We are not allowed to bear arms. Japan's constitution has something similar, Article 9. It says Japan renounces war and can maintain an army. I understand that you and your men have neither state nor ideology that you will fight any foe. Please, you must drive them out of our defenseless country. We come to you, the Militaire Sans Frontières. So, you want to hire us? Yes, as our deterrent. We can't afford to pay much, it's true. But, we can offer you this. A forward operating base. An offshore plant in the Caribbean. Sounds pretty good to me. This place is becoming a mess anyway. Snake, we need some place we can settle down. The government's agreed to cooperate. Unofficially, of course. A chopper for transport would be nice too. I'll see what I can do. Hold it. You seem to think we're just a pack of dogs of war. Is that right? Yes, that's what I've heard. You're an army without a state. No, we've only left our countries behind. Please, you must help us. If your suspicions are true, force isn't gonna do any good. You'll have to find a political solution. The government's hands are tied. 
Go back to your bosses in San Jose. Tell them if they want, I'll introduce them to a negotiator I know. No. I'm not here on their behalf. So, what are you doing here? For over 20 years, I've preached the virtues of peace at multiple universities. Tonight, I stand before you as an educator. <laughs> this is my student. She came to me to study peace. Her name is Paz. Paz Ortega. Paz. Peace. No kidding. That's my name too. Kazuhira. It's Japanese for peace. Pleased to meet you, Paz. Call me... Kaz. Uh... They've got a supply port north of Puerto Limon. A town in La Costa del Mar Caribe. A few days ago, Paz stumbled upon that facility while searching for a lost friend. She was captured. She's only a child. Sixteen years old. They did terrible things to her. But somehow she managed to escape. Oh. My God. She's Huerfana. Her mother died when she was small. And she lost her grandparents in the Civil War. She hates war with a passion like no other. My name is Paz. And I will do anything to protect my namesake. It is my one and only purpose. Please, get them out of my country. Make them leave Costa Rica. Sorry, kid. We know who you are, big boss. That is why we've come to you. Copy, Snake. I see you've landed. That makes one giant leap for us. I'm sending this from the offshore plant, our mother base. The signal is unidirectional. I'll be giving you commands and advice through this channel. Keep your headphones on at all times and pay attention. Also, make sure no one else can listen in. Snake, are you clear on the controls? Take a minute to refresh your memory. Use the left stick to move. Use the right stick to adjust your view. I gotta thank you for agreeing to this snake. Man, am I glad to be out of here. Finally, we can leave all that crap in San Geronimo behind. And break into the mercenary business for real. Let me guess. You're doing it for her, for aren't her, you? For her. For her. Are they still here? Come on, Snake. This could be good for us. They're willing to give us an offshore plant. A place we can finally put down some roots. This is our chance to expand MSF. We don't need a place to stay, Kaz. We're nomads. We always will be. What? You'd rather keep wandering from conflict to conflict? Tools in the hands of whoever's fighting at the time? The second we settle down, who's to say we won't become the warmongers? Listen to me, Snake. We're not mercenaries. We're not a foreign legion. MSF's a business. A new kind of business. <sighs> Look, it's not like we're trying to start a war here. All we need to do is find out who this security company really is. Come on, Kaz. It's pretty obvious that they're backed by the CIA. Wait a sec. That would mean... Our friend, the Professor, is likely KGB. I see. We'd be making an enemy of our homeland. And there'd be no turning back. Ah, this damn thing won't light. Huh? 
Put on some coffee, Kaz. It's time for a little chat with the professor. I was a heavy smoker. When I got my medal from the Secretary General, he gave me this prosthetic hand as well. But smoking was ruining my lungs, so I quit. I've not had much use for it since. It's quite an honor to meet the legendary Big Boss. That's just a code name the CIA made up. Then perhaps I should call you John. I don't have a name. Stop using that code name you liked so much ten years ago. What about you, comrade? What do they call you back at center? Well then, allow me to get straight to the point. Land as slim as a whip, hot as torture. That's the Chilean poet. Neruda. Central America is the navel of the American continents bridging north and south. We want this land. We'll build a socialist stronghold, then use it to split the Americas in two. America would lose its backyard. And with it, its economic production, shipping lanes, and strategic value. We, on the other hand, would gain a base from which all of Latin America would be well within our reach. He who controls Central America will win this Cold War. First comes Nicaragua, toppling the pro-American Somoza regime. In preparation, we've begun instigating anti-Somoza sentiment and providing aid to the Sandinista National Liberation Front. You're manipulating Sandinista into overthrowing Somoza for you. After the revolution, Nicaragua will become a socialist state. You think America's just gonna let that happen? Certainly not. After all, the CIA is already here. And that's the armed group inside Costa Rica. Precisely. It's clear that they've been sent in to disrupt our efforts across the border in Nicaragua. Simply put, the army now stationed in Costa Rica is CIA capital. But it's more complex than that. The CIA's got something else planned as well. What? That is the million dollar question. Big Boss, we want you and your unit to find the answer. Infiltrate and investigate the facility in La Costa where Paz was imprisoned. Learn all you can of their operations. Then, drive them out of the country. Huh. You're asking us to settle a turf war between the KGB and the CIA? What about her? That was all just an act? Hmm. You mean her words about peace? She was captured, that much is true. But I've kept my KGB affiliation from her. And you thought we'd fall for a sob story? No. I had good reason to bring her along. She managed to escape with her life, but her friend was not so lucky. Why were they attacked? I believe this will help explain. Perhaps they saw something they weren't supposed to. Perhaps they heard something they shouldn't have. A cassette tape? Paz took this during her escape. She says her friend happened to record it by accident. What is that? A portable stereo cassette player. The first of its kind. Ah, I heard they were working on something like that in Japan. Didn't know you guys were, too. I believe what you're about to hear will help you understand. What is that? 
A Quetzal? The Phoenix Bird. Paz's friend was researching birds. She went out into the jungle to record bird calls and stumbled upon this. So? So what? Now it gets interesting. Poisonous. I need to get rid of it. I chase it back to its nest. You can't. The snake's too vicious. It's all... Many people... I chase it away. It will bite you unless you kill it. Go home. Awesome. Voice print analysis confirms that this voice is indeed that of the legendary hero and criminal, the boss. W what? The other hasn't been identified. Female in her 30s with a British accent. The song playing in the background was a hit in 1973. What's it going to be? Loyalty to your country or loyalty to me? Your country or your mentor? Your mission? Or your beliefs. I... I am loyal to myself. Boss is alive in Costa Rica. Who's that? As I understand it, she was your commander, fought by your side. And that you killed her under orders from the CIA, thus surpassing her to become the hero known as Big Boss. Snake, it's gotta be a trap. So you still can't turn your back on your country. Then I suppose you won't need this. Wait! Snake? I'll do it for the girl. For Paz. Okay. For peace, then. <laughs> Number of warheads detected by the dew line. 57. Number of MIRVs included. Minimum 29, maximum 35. Target region. United States. East Coast. Estimated time of re-entry. 2048 Zulu. President selected attack option. Unknown. The president is dead. Unknown. Communication has been lost. I select Offutt Air Force Base as my target. Offutt? But that's a U.S. base. What on earth do you mean? Based on the projected number of incoming warheads, Washington, D.C. is presumed destroyed. The president is most likely dead. The U.S. government's control lost. I realize that. So why not retaliate? With both sides destroyed, global anarchy would ensue. Recovery would be... difficult. The United States' nuclear strike capability must therefore be neutralized in order to preserve the communist bloc, where government remains largely intact. You're siding with the enemy. You can't be serious. Tell me, how do you define enemy? There are no borders in this world. The same conclusion again and again. Where is the flaw? All right, let's try something else. Commencing test. Understood. You're crossing a suspension bridge. Is this my mission? Yes, your destination is the other side. The bridge is wide enough for only one person to pass at a time. A man is approaching from the opposite side. He's carrying a gun. I shoot him. Suppose he's your husband. I shoot him. In self-defense? To spare him the grief. One must die, and one must live. Next question. Your father asks you to fix the roof and mow the lawn. When you climb the ladder onto the roof, the ladder is taken away. I fix the roof. And when you're finished? I jump down. You'll break more than bones at this height. I see no need to change my decision. I have not finished mowing the lawn. I must remain loyal to the mission. Next. There is a snake in the bushes. It is poisonous. I need you to get rid of it. I chase it back to its nest. You can't. The snake's too vicious. It's already killed many people. 
I chase it away. It will bite you unless you kill it. Go home. Kill me. Kill me now. Why not kill the snake? Your mission is to get rid of it. Is this what you call loyalty? What are you loyal to? Country? Ideology? Feelings? I... I... I am loyal to myself. Who's there? <gasps> Who's that? Intruder! <laughs> CIA mercs. Snake, you've got to get past them undetected. Avoid combat whenever possible. This is a sneaking mission. Hide behind stuff. Take the long way around. Whatever it takes to stay out of sight. Your gun is a last resort. It could just as easily kill you as save you. The indicator in the upper right serves as a compass and shows sound sources. Pay attention to your surroundings. you're inside the compound. Security is tight. Stay sharp. Yes, sir, we broke them. We acquired the whereabouts of target 500. Acknowledged. Spears are loaded. The barge is cleared, Point Bravo. Acknowledged. Out. What's up there? Clear. You found a radio. It's got a circuit that reverses the audio phase. Let's switch frequencies from time to time, just to make sure we're not detected. I found a map of their bases. The cargo's heading from the marshes west towards Irasu. Nice going, boss. Kaz, this place is full of film badges. Dozens of them. Film badges? Like the ones used to measure radiation exposure? <sighs> the radio man was wearing one. And whoever he was talking to called the cargo Spears. Wait, that would mean... Nukes. They're bringing nukes into Costa Rica. 
Holy Mother of God. How's that map, Snake? Think you can use it? Uh, it tells me where their bases are, but it's just a bunch of points. No routes. I need better intel on the lay of the land. Snake, the professor said he's got the Sandinistas on his side. Said you should get in touch with the FSL and Commandante. Hmm. Do they know they're backed by the KGB? Nah. As far as they know, they're really fighting for the revolution. The KGB is staying behind the scenes. I'm not sure the Sandinistas are aware of what's really going on. Still can't believe anybody would bring nukes here. Yeah, that's a shocker. Costa Rica's party to the Tlatel Loco Treaty, which declares Latin America a nuke-free zone. Based on Japan's three non-nuclear principles, it bans the testing, use, import, or deployment of nuclear weapons. If word of this gets out, Openall will be forced to act. It'll cause an international uproar. The treaty was signed to prevent another Cuban Missile Crisis. If the U.S. itself is gonna scrap it... Latin America is too close to spawning another Cuba or two already. The entire continent would become one big powder keg. Well, if they did bring nukes, we can't let them get away with it. Are they planning a test? Showing off? Or is it all to keep the anti-American movement in check? Good question. Why bring them here? I can't figure it out. Whatever the CIA's up to in Costa Rica, the Professor wants it stopped. We need to find out what that something is. We need to get ready first, Kaz. Repairs. Working as fast as we can, boss. This place is pretty beat. Looks like hell. But as long as you're with us, we'll make it heaven. No one can bother us here. No state telling us what to do. This is the MSF's haven. Our mother base. And with this foothold, we'll back you up even better than before. We're gonna turn this pile of junk into something big. Snake. I rigged that radio so you can contact our young lady friend, Paz. Is she okay? No need to worry. She's tougher than you think. Still just a kid. Which is exactly why she could be an effective source of information. Besides, that little Angel de la Paz is the one who gave us this mission, right? I guess. I'll put her on. Snake! Paz, where are you? Ciudad Colon. A school. The teacher told me to stay here until things quiet down. Teacher? Oh, him. He's... Yeah, that's probably good advice. See, si. He has a radio in his room, so we can talk anytime. Hmm. Pretty fancy for a teacher. Promise me, Snake, that you'll bring back peace and... I know. I'll contact you if I find your friend. Thank you. Snake... If you need to know about Costa Rica, the geography, the climate, the wildlife, anything, just ask me. I know about its history and laws, too. We learned it all in school. Got it. I have a question. I'll ask. I, uh... What? In school, I also learned that peace is an unnatural state for human society, and that war is a constant threat to our relationships with others. That's right. So... To achieve peace, we have to create it ourselves. Crying about it won't bring it about or make it last. Each one of us must go and seek it out. You won't find it without making sacrifices. No offense, but I don't know what peace is. Never felt what it's like. Huh. Never even been interested in it. Snake? Oh, sorry. Listen, Paz, I think your ideas are admirable. I hope they turn out to be right. Yeah, me too. Peace is in your name. Who better to help bring it back? Thanks, Snake. I will be here whenever you need me. See you later. Snake, use your radio to call people. But stay alert. You're in the middle of a mission and can't afford to let your guard down. Got it. Need to know more about Costa Rica? Haas can help you out. Good to know. We'll follow their transport route. This should take us straight to their main base. From what I've seen, it looks like nukes. Agreed. The key thing now is to confirm whether those spears really are what we think they are, and if so, why they're here. Follow the transport route. Find the nukes. That's what I'm thinking. First, we should make contact with the Sandinista Commandante. 
They can tell us more about what's up ahead. But it looks like their hideouts already come under attack. We better hope they're still alive. Snake, infiltrate that cabin and secure the Sandinistas' Commandante. Neutralize any guards by knocking them out, putting them to sleep, or even using the Fulton recovery system. You choose how to handle it, boss. The boathouse should be close by. Neutralize the security detail and make contact with the Commandante. Fulton recovery subject confirmed on board helicopter. Someone attacking? Good. Now meet with the FSLN Commandante. He's inside the boathouse. No way! What do we do? Sandinista's right. I'm looking for someone. Mi viejo! Shh! He's dead. They killed nuestro viejo. You're his daughter. Then that makes you his delegado, right? Relax, I'm not your enemy. Cuban. Hmm, a cigar? I'll take whatever you've got. I owe you one. But I prefer cigarettes, you know. How do I look? A little like El Che, no? You Cubano? Mm, Colombiano. A photographer. I came to Costa Rica to take pictures of birds. Birds? Yeah, uh, Quetzals. You've got no telephoto lens. How do you get your shots? Telephotos for amateurs. It's all in the timing. Oh. Let me smoke okay. too. We can talk until I finish this. Chico! <sighs> Tell me what's going on here. This place is crawling with soldiers. They don't look like private security. More like hired guns. They're loaded with the latest gear from all over the world. I heard they're a security force hired by Codessa. Uh, yeah, and I'm Papa Noel. Those guys are UCLA's. UCLA's. La Cia. I saw them. Setting up shop in town. They're planning to do here what they did in Chile. If that's the case, what are they after? Whatever it is, it's not us. You don't think they're here to push you back into Nicaragua? Impossible. Too much hardware. Too many bases. Didn't you see? They've got helicopters, tanks. It's like we're in Da Nang. There must be something else. They have a base near here. There's a factory to the north, across a suspension bridge. Factory to the north, across a bridge. Have you seen the big transport boat, mercenary crew, on the Rio del Jade? You mean the barge? It's upstream from here. Up toward Yarasu. Hmm. Any idea what's on it? I could introduce you to some of our compas up there. But I don't recommend going to the mountains. We've lost a lot of people there. They take us captive, torture us for information about our compass, and then they kill us like pigs. Got it! All right! This was our last hideout, the final refuge for El Frente, after being pushed out of Nicaragua and into this peaceful paradise of Costa Rica. Then, El Monstruo attacked. A monster? 
y mi viejo. Mi viejo. Papá. Tú eres la esperanza. Ahora, Ho. Now that Papa is gone, my sister is the commandant of the revolution. Do not listen to him. Papa was a hero who fought by Sandino's side. I am only his daughter. You need a special talent to become cacique. It takes someone great to unite all of Las Compas. Sorry to interrupt, but leaders don't choose themselves. Neither do heroes. You carry on his legacy of La Esperanza, and they'll follow you, no question. You think so? My compas trust me, but not one of them calls me Comandante. Amanda! <laughs> See what I mean? El Colibri! <laughs> for their torture. Unmanned. Unmanned? I'd heard rumors, but an operational unit? What the hell is going on here? Not to quote Amanda, but the hardware they've got here isn't just unusual. It's overkill, which means one thing. It's nukes. So the question now becomes, why? We can't make that call yet. We need more intel. How? Our source is dead. But his daughter isn't. Good thinking. We can follow her. Head for the next outpost, and make contact with Amanda, if she's still alive. Roger. Uh! 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 Uh!
and recovery subject confirmed onboard helicopter. Bolton recovery to helicopter is complete. Bolton recovery subject confirmed onboard helicopter. Again, we fought. I didn't want Chico to know, kept it a secret. Somosa's Guardia chased us out of Nicaragua across the Rio San Juan, and we ended up here. The only reason we've been able to keep on fighting. Amanda. The factory. You saw it? The banana factory. A front. It's a drug refining plant. The KGB set it up for us to run. We used the income to buy food and 
weapons. Mi viejo never said a word, but we all knew. Everyone except Chico. Everything we have, our weapons, our compass, he brought it all together. We were going to rebuild our country. Rebuild Nika with our own hands. Even if we had to dirty our hands to do it. But it's all over. We lost our cacique. Papa! I could never replace him. Now they've taken the plant from us too. There's no place left to regroup. No way to fight la revolucion. Here, I rolled you one. What about you? You're going after that cargo? Yeah. Must be important, hmm? Hmm. Looks that way. It looks like it could be nukes. What? Nukes? Madre de Dios. No time to waste. We must get to Irasu. The transport route leads there. It must be where they're holding Chico and my compass, too. Whenever Chico and I argue, he goes off to be by himself. That's why he knows more than anybody about their bases. He... Oh, Chico... You're pretty worried about your baby brother. This is why I'm not fit to be a leader. Fine. It's a little bit out of my way, but... Just tell me where I need to go. There's a prison. Up in the mountains. That's probably where he is. A prison in the mountains. You must do something for me. If you can't save Chico, I want you to ease his pain. End his humiliation. If he gives in, if he's about to sell out his compass, please... At least let him keep his honor. That's a promise I can't make. Why? Amanda, we gave up our homes, but we're still alive. We're still fighting. And there's always another reason to keep on living. I feel alive again. Amanda, join my unit until you've healed up. Your unit? Yeah. Who are you? Why are you here? I'm Snake. Serviente. Snake? Could it be the great cacique has come to be us? Kaz, can you hear me? MSF here. One for recovery. She's wounded. Acknowledged. Kaz, the cargo on the barge. I was right. It's headed for the mountains. You think that's where they're taking the nukes? I'm sure of it. Let's move. Snake, Amanda's reached the plant. Snake. Amanda, how do you feel? Some first helicopter ride. I'll be perfectly happy if it's my last. As you can see, she's doing fine. I set Amanda up with her own frequency, so call her anytime you need to. 
If you have any questions about American bases or mercenary units, or about El Frente, just ask. And please, do not forget my compass and Chico. Don't worry. It's good to be working with you, boss. Snake, we can monitor her condition in sickbay. Remember to assign roles to any POWs you bring back to Mother Base. How this outfit gets built depends on who we assign to what jobs. That'll determine how Mother Base grows. It's one of your most important roles, boss. Yeah, I know. Snake, the nukes appear to have left the coastal marshes and reached the mountains around Irazu. But without a guide, it's going to be tough tracking those things in the mountains. So we need you to infiltrate one of their bases, a prison facility. I hope nothing's happened to Amanda's brother. I hear you. There may be other Sandinistas held there too. To bring them back safely to MSF, use the Fulton recovery system. As I'm sure you know from experience, it's completely harmless. After all, you won't have time to sit there and convince every single one of them to join. One other thing, Snake. Amanda. Those CIA bastards confiscated some of the houses in the village. Chico's got to be inside one of them. Houses, huh? How do I tell which ones? When they took over the houses, they installed new front doors for security purposes. The new doors are blue, with peepholes, so you can see what's inside. Blue doors. Got it. You're getting close to the end of the transport route. Good luck, Snake. Chico's in one of these houses. You've got to find him, Snake. To check inside a house, press the action button in front of the door. Not this one. Photographer. That's right. A war photographer. Huh? I thought you were here for the birds. Yeah, um, the birds of the battlefield. Whoa! Is that Chess? Can I see it? Wow, the same kind El Che used! You can't keep it, kid. Here, have these instead. Those photos! Huh. Oh no, Amanda! She's safe. Don't worry. Are you sure? We're patching her up back in my place. She's hurt? I said, don't worry. It's just a broken leg. You got any cigarettes? Mm. Hey, cigar, huh? Hey! Not for kids. Chico, do you know where they took the cargo? Cargo? What cargo? Let me rephrase that. How do they get stuff from the coast up here? Oh, that I can tell you. When the cargo gets to the harbor, they first send it up the marshes on a barge. Then, they load it onto a jungle train past the banana plantation and transport it by rail. The train stops here. When it gets to the train terminal past the coffee plantation, they reload it again. This time onto a truck, which disappears into a tunnel heading toward the mountains. Disappears? Chico, what's on the other side of that tunnel? Nobody knows. None of our compass ever got close enough. He's protected by a spirit. A uh, spirit? Yeah, a giant monster. El Basilisco. The king of snakes. No, 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 really, I saw it. I was camping up there one day, and just as I was waking up around dawn, I heard this loud noise. I opened my eyes and saw an enormous shadow. Must have been 30 bada at least walking on legs as big as trees where did you see it at the terminal near the tunnel but i only saw it that one time what exactly were you doing there i uh 
Well, me and my sister got into a fight. And you just happened to go camping. You know, their train should be arriving at the place I saw El Basilisco right about now. Is it far? No, really. Go past the coffee plantation, and it'll be to the north. What are you chasing? Hmm. Something that could keep the world in balance. Or destroy it. Huh? I heard that place was a narcotics plant before those guys took it over. But you already knew that, didn't you? Huh. Look, I get it. Even revolutionaries need to pay the bills. Still, must be tough for a kid like you to swallow. You're damn right it is. The route they use to transport stuff is the same one me viejo used to smuggle drugs. They sold the drugs to the Norte Americanos and used the profits to fund the army. They tried to keep it hidden from me. Is that why you went camping? Yes. I managed to sneak into the plant a few times and I tried to set it on fire. Everyone treats me like a child. I, I, I couldn't stand it anymore. I'm not a kid, I'm 12. Couldn't do it though, could you? <laughs> Chico, growing up means choosing how you're gonna live your life. To do the right thing, you sometimes have to leave the things you care about behind. Parents, family, your homeland. But mi viejo. Chico, look at the photos. Mi viejo. He's gone. But there's one thing you don't ever leave behind. Your memories. Keep them safe. You want to get out of here, Chico? I do, but... Come back with me. Your sister's waiting for you. I can't go back. I can't face everybody. You told them where your compas are. I see. <laughs> Nothing to be ashamed of. Pain gets the better of us all. <laughs> Okay, then. I'll put you out of your misery. What? Any last words? Shoot. You are only going to kill a man. I just wasted a bullet. Don't waste your life. Listen to me, Chico. You died here today. You understand? You're hombre nuevo. A new man. Now, give that new life to me. Huh? Fight with me, little soldier. Show me how strong you really are. <laughs> Dry your tears. Then promise me one thing. No smoking until you get older. Remember, real heroes are never as polished as the legends that surround them. You got it, boss. Uh, Snake is fine. What's that? Snake, Chico made it over. Snake! Chico, you made it. Made it? Don't give me that. You say you're gonna give me a new life, and then you nearly kill me! <laughs> I take it you didn't enjoy the trap. What's the big idea? Dragging me off in a... balloon! I might as well have taken a Calibri. At least you got a nice view. Or are you afraid of heights? Whatever. I just wish you would explain it to me first. Would you have agreed to go if I did? <sighs> Thank you for saving us, Snake. Amanda, a word of advice. What? Stop treating him like a child. Yes. Yes, I know. You're right. I shouldn't. Amanda, you're coming back after your leg heals, right? 
Of course. We still have work to do. We, huh? Are you sure you've got Chico's future in mind when you say that? What do you mean? We're sworn to our father's cause, to helping the revolution succeed. Revolution or no revolution, you pick up a gun and sooner or later you're going to hell. Are you prepared for that? I am. If the alternative is giving up the country I love, I'll take hell. Really? Well then, you're gonna have to stop treating Chico like a brother, and start treating him like a soldier. I... You're right. Welcome to hell. Snake, can I ask you a favor? Shoot. You find any prisoners from El Frente, you bring him back alive. Because... Hmm. You're trying to make amends for talking. Not just that. Because they're compas. All right. But first, I've got to catch up to that cargo. I'll do whatever I can to help. Call me if there's anything you need to know about the area. And... And what? Let me know if you encounter any wildlife you've never seen before. Never seen before? What, like that Basilisco you were talking about? I'm talking about UMAs. UMAs? You know, like ancient dinosaurs or, or legendary monsters. One day, I'm going to be a hunter. Is that right? Okay, sure. If you want to know more, I'm happy to tell you. Right. I'll be in touch, Chico. Okay, Snake. The enemy's cargo is headed for the next outpost, a rail terminal. Chico says no one's ever set foot past there. Their main base is probably on the other side of that tunnel. Unless we catch those spears before reaching it, they'll be in enemy hands. You've got to stop them. Hurry, Snake. We're just in time. Neutralize all enemies and secure the train. I know I saw. Hey! Who's that? Fulton recovery to helicopter is complete. Fulton recovery subject confirmed onboard helicopter.
about the tank. Just focus on the troops. <laughs> they haven't seen you yet. Perfect. Now's your chance. Magnetic net! Snake, the truck is headed up the mountain road past the tunnel. So it was nukes after all. What now? Their main base is up ahead. I better hurry after them then. But... Kaz, if I don't get moving, it'll be too late. All right. I guess you never did let dangerous assignments or risk aversion get in your way. How do I get inside the mountain? I can forget about the tunnel. Yeah, the tank took care of that. Any other routes? Why don't I let a local expert take over? Snake, you need a way into the mountain? Yeah, got one. Mm, let's see. Uh, do you remember that precinct I was in? In the village, right? Right. Go back to the village and head north. There is a bridge that connects to the mountain road. It crosses over a gorge. That's probably the best way. But there is a little problem. The path heading north from the village is barricaded. You might have to break through. Got it. The heart of Irasu. That's where the enemy's base has got to be, Snake. And maybe... Let me guess. The Basilisk Hall. You don't believe me, do you? No, I mean... We'll have to see. Snake. Inazu features a number of crater lakes. The Odeberg government had planned to use those lakes to construct hydroelectric plants as one of its big state development projects. The project was scrapped, but there's still a small opening at the bottom of the lake. Meaning? I checked the satellite imagery, but didn't see anything man-made, which means they probably built a base inside the mountain. Could just be a storage igloo for explosives, or maybe some kind of research facility. What do they hope to accomplish by bringing the nukes there? First things first, get past that barricade north of the village. Looks like the only way through is the noisy way. You'll have to blow it up. March 10th, 1945. 381,300 cluster bombs were dropped on Tokyo. Japanese houses at the time were almost all made of wood. In that single day, a third of Tokyo burned to the ground. My mom lost her family and home in that raid. She had to move to Yokosuka and live with her cousin. The B-29s kept on coming, raising other major cities throughout Japan without mercy. Then, in August, they dropped atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and Japan surrendered to the United States at last. After that, Yokosuka was flooded with American soldiers come to occupy the country. My mother was still in her mid-teens, and she learned from her cousin how to survive in that town, by servicing the troops. That's how she met my father, and how I was born. My father was an officer serving with the government section of Allied GHQ under General Whitney. Whitney was known as MacArthur's shadow, and my father rode his coattails to a pretty high rank. While he was in Japan, he treated my mom like a wife. After he went back to the States, though, she never heard from him. I wasn't born until after he went back. My mom raised me as a single mother. She used the money my father left her to open a shop, selling cigarettes and stuff to occupation troops. It was a decent living, but I didn't have citizenship. They're working to change the law now, but 
Back then, if your father was unknown, you couldn't get onto the Japanese family register. And in Japan, that means you can't be Japanese. So as I watched the American soldiers around town, I said to myself, I'm a son of America, the victor. My hair and eyes were different from the skinny, downtrodden Japanese around me. I told myself I'd leave this country someday and return to my true homeland. When I was around 10 years old, my mom fell ill, pretty much leaving me to run the shop in her place. One day I found a single picture of my father in the back of a drawer in the shop. I'd show it to the American soldiers who came into the store. A few years went by before one of them told me who he was. I know him, that's Miller. I started asking other guys, do you know where Miller is now? Can anybody tell me where Colonel Miller is now? Turns out he'd left the service and was making a living as an instructor for soldiers in Virginia. It was one of his students who finally told me that. I wrote him a letter in English. I'm your son. I want to go to the United States. Day after day, I waited. Then just when I was about to give up, the post office delivered my future to the door. My father sent me some money. I thought my dream was going to come true. I was only thinking of myself. So I went to my bedridden mother and convinced her to let me go. My father arranged for a car to pick me up. It was jet black. When the neighborhood kids who'd always made fun of my hair saw it, their jaws practically hit the ground. I put my mom in a hospital and went on my own to America. When I met my father for the first time, he was living alone in a big house. He told me he'd lost his son, his American son in Vietnam. He showed me a picture, a picture of my older brother. I guess that and his divorce left my father feeling lonely, which is probably why he finally took an interest in me. He'd retired from teaching. He was stooped over, could hardly walk, but he gave me two things, the name Miller and money for school. I used it to learn English and then go to college. America was exhausted from years of fighting in Vietnam. They were waging war in a foreign land while at home people were screaming for peace. Right after I graduated, I went back to Japan, alone. My father refused to see my mom. It was the first time I'd seen her in years, and she wouldn't even look at me. At first I thought she was mad at me, but that wasn't it. Disease had taken her mind. A disease she got while she was young and desperate. She didn't even know who I was. I said, Mom, it's me, Kazuhira. As I spoke, the sound of my own voice rang in my ears. Katsuhira, the name my mom gave me. It means peace in Japanese. I was Japanese. At least, I was the son of this tiny Japanese woman. It was then, for the first time, that I understood the reason, the emotion that inspired my mother to give me that name. She'd watched her hometown and family go up in flames. Her body and her mind were ravaged by war. And yet she chose to have a child named Peace with a man who was once her enemy. Japan lost the war. But what good is war as a measure of a country? Since the war and up until the oil shock last year, Japan's economy has grown every single year. It's on its way to becoming a stronger country than ever. I stayed in Japan and joined the JSDF. I was 22 at the time. I did it to pay our bills. But it wasn't just that. I could have found work anywhere. And I knew it. And still, I couldn't think of anything else to do with myself. Two years later, I didn't have to worry about Mom's hospital bills anymore. I left the JSDF and went back to the States. My father was already dead and buried. I was told he'd shot himself in the head. America crushed Japan. But it also crushed my father. My American dream was over. After that, I drifted around and, well, you know the rest. GHQ made women like my mother. It made Japan's peace constitution and the JSDF. And it made me. I was spawned by war. But I don't want to die in one. I won't die for a country. And I won't live like a pauper. I won't have my fate decided by some family register. So as long as I stick with you, boss, I've got a good feeling none of that will happen. Life's funny sometimes, isn't it? What brought that on? We first met as enemies on the battlefield, and now here we are fighting side by side. You mean Columbia? Yeah. After I quit the JSDF, 
I made my way there and got myself a position as a drill sergeant for a band of revolutionaries. Despite the fact that I'd never seen a day of combat. I see you had the gift for talking business in Spanish even back then. Oh, come on, stop it. You're making me blush. Unlucky for me, though, you were in the service of the Colombian Army. I remember it like it was yesterday. It all happened in an instant. You guys ambushed us, and half my unit was taken out. My mind went totally blank. I couldn't keep it together. My whole unit was wiped out. And I was left half dead from a bomb blast. Then, as I was leaving, you yelled out at me. I came all the way from Japan to be here. My place is on the battlefield. Then you asked for my help, saying... I want to be the one to end it. I remember being surprised that there were still samurai in Japan. You guys came over to me. I had a grenade hidden under me. But even then, you were too fast. The second I pulled the pin, you grabbed the hand I was using to hold the grenade with both palms. I didn't want it to go off. I'd heard samurai were a proud bunch. I wanted to know why one of them would stoop so low as to try to take his opponent with him. And I said, I'll never lose again. We'll never lose again. Yeah. We'll do whatever it takes, but we'll never be beaten again. Then, I passed out from the blood loss. When I woke up, I was in your camp's infirmary, stuck full of tubes. Why'd you save me? Your enemy after I tried to kill you. Because you swallowed your pride and fought with everything you had. I just didn't want to lose. You found a way to fight back, even in the face of death, even when you knew you were going to die. That's the mark of a true warrior. It's not about gain and loss. Or victory and defeat. I looked at the way you lived your life and saw the path I needed to take. As a warrior. Wow. I never knew that. And that's why you... I realized then that the battlefield doesn't only divide people into allies and enemies. Sometimes it tells you more than just who's an ally or who's an enemy. Sometimes it helps reveal your true comrades. Like you and me, huh? That's right. And two years later, here we are. Snake, I've got just the explosive to bust through that barricade. C4. We finished developing C4 charges. Take some with you. First, equip your C4. You can't plant a charge unless it's equipped. <laughs> I know I Once the charge is planted, press the attack button without aiming to detonate it. Good work, Snake. You hear that, Bank? We're being shot at. Going to alert status. Hunter's Next last is going to attract attention. Proceed the bad with kind. extra caution. Watch yourself. Inside the facility, there's rows and rows of trucks here. If that's where they brought the nukes, then the truck we're after should be there. Snake, can you tell which one of the trucks brought the nukes? One of them must have the same license plate as the one from the terminal. Uh, not this one. Mr. Kojima? Sunlight! Where are they? Nothing. 
This is the one. The exhaust's still warm. But the cargo's already been offloaded. Just a minute. This isn't what we agreed on. It's too late. The changes have already been finalized. You told me it was going to be a deterrent that we wouldn't have to launch. I am not arguing with you, Doctor. Our goal is to create the perfect deterrent. That's why I agreed to help develop it. Mm -hmm. However, in order to achieve that perfect deterrent, we must show the world our strength. Three key principles ensure effective nuclear deterrence. First, you must have nuclear weapons. Second, you must never use them first. And third, and most important, if someone attacks you, you must strike back. Unless we prove beyond a doubt that these three principles work in practice, the world will not accept our new deterrent. And the only way to do that is to show them we are capable of actually launching a nuke. But isn't deterrent supposed to stop nukes from being used? Exactly. And so the one we launch will be the last one ever. I won't let you use my creation like that! <laughs> your creation? <laughs> that thing wasn't even your idea to begin with. You stole it, didn't you? <clears throat> stole it? You're one to talk! You got the idea for bipedal locomotion from the communists in the first place! You listen to me, Doc. Keep quiet. Do as I say. Not another word about stolen ideas. Should we succeed here, you'll be the toast of the scientific community. And your name will go down in history as champion of both progress and national security. The hell with that! Doctor! Unless we prove we are capable of launching, <laughs> Peace Walker is useless as a deterrent. <laughs> You used me! We used each other. I'll get my old director's job back at headquarters, and you'll finally be able to walk tall among your colleagues. Uh, I won't let you get away with this! How unfortunate. Guess I'll just have to take your legs for myself! <laughs> Just come to us, Doc. We are going to have to meet it halfway. V for victory. Wait! <laughs> hey, you okay? Don't do it! Snap out of it! Where are the nukes? He's gonna do it! He's gonna launch a nuke!
fast, so be careful!
That was an unmanned weapon. A prototype. I made it myself. Who are you? I work here. Well, used to, anyway. Name's Huey. And who might you be? You don't look like one of those mercenaries. Me? I'm uh, an entomologist. A fighting entomologist? Yeah, I specialize in butterflies. I'm here to catch Ulysses. Ulysses? Huh. I didn't think they lived in Costa Rica. Morphos, maybe? That's it. I uh, need to get some before the Washington Treaty goes into effect. It says here Morphos aren't covered under the treaty. Uh, must have slipped my mind. You sure you're feeling all right? Anyway, long story short, the butterfly got away. So how about it, Doc? Did you make that big butterfly, too? Uh, yes. And no. What was that thing? What are they doing here? Huh. Something tells me you're no ordinary entomologist. <sighs> the nukes were loaded on that machine. The project's entering its final phase. Project? That's right. The thermonuclear warheads they brought in, the bases scattered throughout Costa Rica, the mercenaries, the AI weapons, the research we were conducting here. It's all for this. We used this facility to develop unmanned weapons. Unmanned? Robots. The one you just fought was a pupa. There's also a flying type called Chrysalis, and a treaded type, the Cocoon. Motor control, target detection, tracking, attack, capture, and transport functions are all controlled by an electronic brain. There's no need for a human pilot. They can only follow simple commands, though. Why build them here? For the CIA. They invited me here a year ago. That's who that guy was. CIA's station chief for Central America. Goes by the name of Hot Coldman. Apparently he was some sort of hero back at the height of the Cold War. He's the one running the show. We called it the Peace Walker Project. Peace Walker? They're going to deploy a new type of nuclear weapon along the Caribbean coast of Latin America. A mobile, unmanned nuclear platform. Unmanned nuclear platform? A fail-deadly system that can automatically move into position and launch a retaliatory nuclear strike. It can move on its own, and stealth shields it from radar and satellite detection, drastically reducing the risk of it being destroyed in a preemptive strike. And this is the new deterrent? Supposed to be. The problem is the locomotion system. There's no dry season in the Caribbean. It rains all year round. The terrain is full of tropical rainforest. A lot of the time you can't even build a proper road. So I went back to where it all started. What's that? Legs. Walking power. <laughs> a mobile launcher carrying a thermonuclear warhead even more powerful than the Soviet RDS 220s. That's Peace Walker. <sighs> Chico's Basilisco. We did the assembly and field testing here. A walking nuke. I sort of borrowed the original idea from behind the Iron Curtain. The missing link between infantry and artillery. Metal Gear. Metal Gear? But they'd actually need to deploy dozens of them. Coldman needs funding for that. And to get it, he's planning a test which will also serve as a demonstration for the folks back at Langley. Wait, he's launching a nuke to prove that his perfect deterrent works? In his words, to prove that if someone attacks us, we will strike back. Put simply, nuclear deterrence is the idea of using nukes to keep nukes in check. If one side launches nuclear weapons, the other is sure to launch theirs in retaliation, which makes launching an act of suicide. In the end, neither side can use its nukes. It's thanks to this doctrine that the world's two superpowers have avoided all-out confrontation. 
Nuclear deterrence has brought us peace. At the very least, it's prevented another world war from breaking out. But the theory of nuclear deterrence exists only on paper. In reality, there's no guarantee that either side would follow through with retaliation. There's the chance that a preemptive strike could destroy all the missile bases, render them unable to retaliate. But the biggest flaw in the theory is that the decision to retaliate has to be made by human beings. Let me give you a real-world example. Let's say Country X launches first against Country Y. If the people in charge of Country Y are like you and me, they're not going to be able to retaliate, knowing that they're effectively ending all human life. So then the weak link in nuclear deterrence theory is the uncertainty of retaliation. Bingo. And that creates a loophole Country X can exploit to launch the first strike. Which is why we designed the system to be unmanned. With Peace Walker, retaliation is certain. It chooses the appropriate target and launches a retaliatory nuclear strike every time without needing human input to make the call. Launching a nuclear strike against Peace Walker is tantamount to pushing the launch button against yourself. It closes the loophole in nuclear deterrence theory, rendering our friends in Country X completely unable to launch. What Coldman is saying is that to achieve this goal, we need to demonstrate that retaliation will be carried out by a machine. He will launch his nuke. And then his version of deterrence will be complete. And you believe him? I believe in peace through nuclear deterrence. Why? My father worked on the Manhattan Project. He put his whole life into that research. And all it created was this illusion of peace called deterrence. And then I was born. Unable to walk. I had no choice but to face up to the nukes. But... If they do end up launching, it'll all have been for nothing. They've got to be stopped. Where'd they take the warheads? To a base near the border. The final test is five days from now. Where's the base? You're gonna stop them? It's kind of a hike. And besides, there's a surefire way to halt the project. You see, Peace Walker isn't quite finished yet. What do you mean? It's missing one last critical structural component. The AI. It's brain. The reptile pod, the electronic brain I was working on, can only follow commands like, go there, attack that. I guess you could compare it to the human cerebellum. But for nuclear deterrence to work, it must function in place of a human decision maker. It needs something to analyze the huge volumes of data coming in and select an appropriate target for retaliation. Hence, it needs the high-level decision-making ability of a cerebrum. The mechanical cerebrum. The hardware configuration is modeled on the human brain, similar to the pod I worked on, but its role is completely different. Where's it being made? A research lab to the north. An AI expert named Dr. Strangelove is developing it. Very hush-hush. Dr. Strangelove? Strangelove was recruited from the States, too. In the field of AI, there's no one better, that's for sure. But man, what a basket case. She hates everybody. Go to the lab and destroy Peace Walker's cerebrum. I'm pretty sure they haven't finished the final calibrations yet. I'll lend you my ID card. It'll get you through security at the lab. Oh, and uh, one more thing. What's this? A letter of recommendation? Yeah, it's, um, it's from me to Dr. Strangelove. Don't read it, okay? So what will you do now? I... I'm done with science. At this rate, I'm probably already halfway to hell anyway. Not so fast. Why not join us? Our place is outer heaven. You'd fit right in. Outer heaven? Yeah. I'm probably better suited to something like that than this paradise. 
good. You get a free balloon trip for signing up. Enjoy it. You'll feel like a butterfly. You're an agent, right? Who do you work for? Me. I was a Cold War tool, same as you. Now I'm not so useful anymore, so they cut me loose. I don't answer to anyone. Call me Snake. Snake? The name seems familiar somehow. Yeah, it's probably just deja vu. See that there? Beyond the cloud forest? See those ruins? Yeah. That's where you'll find Dr. Strangelove's lab. Snake, the doctor's safe here with us. Huey, how are you feeling? Never better. This is quite the pad you've got here, boss. I'm impressed. Call me Snake. Whatever you say. Like it or not, everyone here calls you boss. <sighs> by the way, if you're at all interested in improving your tech, by all means, assign me to the R&D section. I'm pretty sure I'll be of some use. Once we have the necessary materials and blueprints, we can start work on that bipedal mech. I appreciate that, but are you sure you're okay with having your work used for war? I'm... I'll be using it to keep past mistakes in check. If I can help thwart the Peace Walker project, I'm happy to do it. <laughs> Deterrence theory, Huey style, huh? <laughs> anyway, if you need any intel on the enemy's weapons or electronic brains, contact me. I've been given my own frequency. Sounds good to me, Doc. I'll do that. Good. Whatever the means, you must put a stop to their plans. So this Dr. Strangelove was at NASA? Yeah. Well, actually, Strangelove left for DARPA not long after I joined. And then the two of you ended up back together doing research at Costa Rica. Uh, not exactly together. We coordinated on a few things, but the research projects themselves were separate from each other. We had it worked out so that Dr. Strangelove handled the mammal pod, Peace Walker's cerebrum, while I did the rest. That letter... something to do with your research? Huh? Uh, well, no, it's a... Uh, uh, yeah, it's a report. Research findings. Research findings? Anything in there we could use against Peace Walker? N nothing. Nothing at all. Just don't read it, okay? Promise me you won't. Walker is the heart of the enemy's project. To prevent its completion, you'll need to either shut down or destroy the artificial intelligence that functions as its brain. According to Huey, that AI is now undergoing final calibrations in Strangelove's lab. It's inside a tropical cloud forest. 
Slip in and terminate that AI before they ship it out. Snake, how's the mule treating you? Uh, at this pace, I should be there by tomorrow morning. You've got to hurry. The AI could be completed any time now. It'd be nice to have a guide. Already on it. I've enlisted Pass to help you. She knows the jungle pretty well. Snake, I know you are an expert in survival, but you need to stay alert. You are in an ancient jungle so foggy, you can hardly see the trees. It is home to 2,500 species of plants, including 400 types of orchids. There are also 500 species of butterflies and over 400 species of wild birds. The bedrock is solid enough that Mayan ruins have miraculously survived centuries of earthquakes. Uh, an AI lab in a Mayan ruin. Who'd have thought, hey, Huey? My sentiments exactly. That doesn't mean security is any less tight, though. You still have the ID card I gave you, don't you? Mm, got it right here. That'll get you through the gate, no problem. After that, you're on your own. As long as the AI remains unassembled, Coldman's plans on ice. <laughs> What about security inside the lab? Well, it shouldn't be a problem for you. Strangelove demanded that the security presence inside the lab be kept to a minimum. It's not all good news, Snake. Coldman knows we're here. He's raised security in the area surrounding the lab. You'll be seeing a lot of that chrysalis UAV, and a bunch of patrol choppers, too. There may be scouts in the jungle lying in ambush. As you approach the lab, be extra vigilant. I'll be careful. Strangelove's lab is a few miles to the north. It won't be long before the AI is complete. Don't let that happen. Careful. If there's enemy scouts around here, they'll be nearly impossible to see. Watch out. Enemy search may not spot enemies that are actively hidden.
joining me on the R&D team, Snake. I'll cut to the chase. We've commenced development on our own bipedal weapon. The only thing is, we don't exactly have easy access to resources here. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have the budget of a defense department behind us. I understand. That's why I want to ask you something. If you fight any more AI weapons, could you try to gather as many of their parts as you can? That would really make things go a lot smoother. Again, easier said than done. If anyone could do it, you can, boss. You single-handedly took out the pupa. True. Look, if you're not interested, I can just work with what we have here. I'm not trying to force you to take unnecessary risks. You're the boss around here. All right. No promises. But I'll think about it. Great. Also, each AI weapon has a head part that serves as the core of its armament. Recovering a head part will allow you to use the weapon associated with that part. But those guys won't go down without a fight, so don't get too preoccupied with this stuff. Don't worry. I'm not about to risk my life for a bunch of scrap. I would hope not. Uh, one more thing. Our new bipedal weapon needs a name. Mm, good point. We can't keep calling it our bipedal weapon. I had a talk with Miller and we came up with Metal Gear Zeke. Metal Gear... Zeke? Yep. As you know, Metal Gear was coined by Granin. And Zeke? It's a name the U.S. military gave to Japanese aircraft that flew during World War II. Zeke was the Japanese Navy's best fighter plane. So are you okay with that, Snake? <sighs> sure. Fine by me. Miller was saying that an army without borders will need a deterrent against other countries. He's right. With Metal Gear, MSF can achieve true independence. Here's hoping. Soldiers? Please, know your gun. Who are you? I'm an ornithologist. A poacher? The gun's for self-defense. I'm looking for uh, that one rare bird in Costa Rica. Which one? The Quetzal? Right, the Quetzal. They're rare, but they're not covered under the Washington Treaty. The resplendent Quetzal is red-listed. Really? You know your stuff. I am an ornithologist myself. Ah, uh, well, we'll have to compare notes later. Uh, here, drink some of this. <laughs> you saved me. They told me this was a paradise. That there were more rare birds here than anywhere else. That there was no war here. That it was safe. They told me it was every birder's dream. But they were wrong. What happened? If only I had not recorded that stupid voice. Voice? I was trying to capture the captain's song. Making my way through a thicket, I saw immense runes towering before me. I chase it away. It will bite you unless you kill it. Go home. You are the one who made the tape. I am loyal to myself. Who's there? Who's there? I was captured by that woman. But she was kind. She gave me food to eat, and even bathed me herself, each day. But... 
She said I could go home in a month. So whatever you do, don't take off the blindfold. Do so, and you will never leave here. Hmm. Guess you didn't listen. How'd you escape? I waited for an opening. Stole an ID card. They almost caught me. But I managed to elude them. You made it this far, and then succumbed to exhaustion. I was barefoot, with no supplies. Oh, I am so sorry. I drink it all. That facility. Did you see anybody else in there? Well, there was another woman, but I never saw her in person. Because, you know, the blindfold. Oh, yes. She often sang. Sang? It was such a strange song. What kind of person was she? Could you tell anything from her voice? I don't know. I don't even know why I was held a prisoner. They confiscated my equipment, my supplies, my passport, money, everything. The only thing I was allowed to keep were my undergarments. So that I would not be able to escape. And now, I am without even the means to prove who I am. I would not make it home to Paris like this. In that case, come to our place. Huh? You don't need a passport there. Don't even need a name. If you want to go back to Paris, we'll take you there anytime. What I want is a shower, a change of clothes, and a cigarette. I've got a cigar. It's Cuban. No French cigarettes? I prefer unfiltered. Fresh out. But come back to my place, and you can have all the French cigarettes you want. It sounds like heaven. <laughs> Close. But not quite. Outer heaven. It is sounding better all the time. Mm, so... You must have gotten a look at the facility when you escaped, right? What's in there? Lots of machinery. A big computer, like you would see in the university. What about the room where you heard the voice? Anybody in there? I don't know. There was a tube. A large tube in the back. When I approached it, I heard a voice. What did it say? Jack. Yes, it simply said Jack over and over. Listen, you've got to get me out of here. I really need a shower. Wait here. I still got business to take care of. What? You're not thinking of going in there, are you? You can't leave me here. Relax. I'll have some friends pick you up. This is Miller. One for recovery. A civilian. Snake, we don't have room for any more civilians here. Hmm. Not even for a blonde Parisienne. A what? So she's a uh, pretty foxy? Uh, see for yourself. If what she's saying is true, I think we've found Paz's friend. The missing one? I'm thinking that she's the one that made that tape. Have her listen to it when she gets there. So she's safe then. Good news. I'm sure Paz will be glad to hear it. You bet. Snake, the ruins are just up ahead. Head north. On my way. What about me? Stay put. Ever wonder what it's like to be a bird? What? It won't open. Damn. It won't open. What's wrong with it? Snake? Huey, your ID card isn't working. It won't open the lock. <sighs> it can't be. What's going on? She hates me that much? <sighs> Strange Love's in charge of authorizing IDs. Sometimes a working card has its privileges removed. Say, if she decides she doesn't like that card's carrier. You think that's what happened? Well... I was never exactly her favorite. Oh. Well, this could be tricky. The soldiers outside aren't allowed in the lab either, so their cards won't do you any good. Great. Snake.
Kaz, where's Cecile? She just got here. Hold on. Nick! Cecile, how'd it feel to fly? <sighs> Wonderful. For a moment, I felt what it must be like to be a bird. It almost made me want to give up my research and get a pilot's license. Did you need something? You said you'd gotten an ID card, right? Yes, but it was confiscated when the guards got me. Who took it? What did he look like? He had an orange jacket. <sighs> I cannot recall his face, though. Yeah, they all look pretty much the same. Where did it happen? Hmm. Let me think. Ah, yes! I do remember hearing the song of a nearby cat cell. <laughs> Just what I'd expect from a birder. Would you like to hear it? Huh? What's that song? It's my cat cell. I took it with me when I was rescued. Didn't you say something about them being covered under the Washington Convention? <laughs> just kidding. That was just me. An imitation. An essential skill for any ornithologist. Pretty good, no? Damn good. If you want to hear the Kettle song again, just let me know. I can tell you all about the birds of Costa Rica, too. Yeah, will do. Thanks, Cecile. No, no. Thank you, Snake. Talk to you soon. Kaz, did you play that tape for Cecile? I sure did. It's hers, all right. Then she must be. She's not. Cecile says she's never even met Paz. What? She's at least ten years too old. What? I'm guessing Paz convinced herself that it was the tape her friend made. But never mind that. Let's go over what we know so far. The soldier with the ID card is wearing an orange jacket and is in a location where you'll hear Quetzal singing. Find that soldier, retrieve that card. That was some escape you made from Strangelove's lab. Security inside was not so tight. The door to my room was locked from the outside, of course. But she took off the blindfold at bath time. So she could wash my hair. Huh. <laughs> Pretty luxurious treatment for a prisoner. Hmm, wasn't it? She wouldn't undo the handcuffs, but she washed my body for me instead. And with such gentle care. Why'd you run away? Didn't she say you could go home in a month? If your escape attempt failed, you'd be in greater danger than before. I was supposed to be giving a presentation on the distribution of Costa Rican bird species at a conference. The date was approaching quickly. So, I pretended I had to use the toilet and made my escape. I found an ID card and searched everywhere for my equipment and my tape. But a soldier saw me. It was a miracle I managed to get away. There was no time to find the tape. I do not care about the conference. I am lucky enough to still be in one piece. You bounce back quick. You don't? Not sure. I try not to dwell too much on the past, but... Then don't. There is no point. I'm so glad to be out of there. I never felt safe, you know? Tell me about it. Well, I think she's interested in women. And I think she took a fancy to me. Oh. Well, that's, um... Huh. Besides, it is much nicer here. Was it just the two women in the lab? Mm, most of the time, we. Oui. Uh, and one of them, you only heard her voice, right? Yes, that is correct. Such a wonderful voice. It sent chills up my spine. What was the other woman like? Ah, don't even think about it. She has not the slightest interest in men. No, it's part of my mission to... <laughs> Only teasing. Let me think. I believe she was in her thirties. Pretty, with a good sense of style, but austere in her taste. A very unusual woman. And she was doing research on AI. AI? So that is what she was up to. You know, she did say something interesting. That people should not be going into space. That it is too dangerous. Hmm. An automated control system for rockets, then. She said something about wanting to get closer to her dying wish. I think she must have been talking about an old lover. Lover? You mean another woman? Huh. <laughs> 
My, aren't we curious about the women and other women? You want to hear the terrible things she tried to do to me? That's not what I meant. It's all right. You can be honest. You two seem to get along awfully well together. No, no. Not at all. I think you're hiding something. <sighs> Never mind. Aren't you supposed to be looking for the Quetzal? Here, I'll demonstrate its call for you. I knew it. Never heard the name Cosima before. Then again, I don't know many people from France. Is it a common name? No, not that common. But Wagner's second wife was named Cosima Francesca Gaetana Wagner. Huh. You know, Kojima is a common last name in Japan. Cause? It's just funny how, you know, I'm part Japanese and Cecile's middle name is so close to Kojima. It feels like destiny unfolding. <laughs> you think so? Oui, oui. That's a beautiful name you have. Cecile Cosima Caminades. Wait a second. Cecile Cosima Caminades. Cosima Caminades. Hey, that's close to... Close to what? Your name. It sounds almost like the sentence, Kojima Caminandes, in Japanese. And what does it mean, s'il vous plaît? Well, Kami is the word for God in Japanese. Nandesu. Well, it's hard to explain, but placed after God, it would turn the sentence into, is God. Okay, so? Kojima is God. Cecile's name is a message. I don't believe it. Kojima is God. Kojima is God. Um, cuz... Snake, to gain access to the lab, you'll need an ID card. You can get one from a guard in an orange jacket stationed in an area where you can hear Quetzal singing. To get the ID card from the soldier, do a body check. You've got to get inside that lab before the AI gets shipped out. Get a move on. I just heard them. Freeze. Start talking. Start talking. Start talking. Snake, pick it up. Nothing here. Excellent. It's open. Yes, waiting without joy or pleasure. Waiting for the one I despise. Don't move! Don't move? You men and your guns. You all say the same thing. I suppose you're here to destroy my research. Yes, I know. Just as I know what you did ten years ago. Go on. Kill me like you killed her. Kill me like you killed the boss. Kill me! What exactly do you... Come on, Snake. Or should I say Big Boss? 
That filthy title given you as reward for murder. Do you still wear it with pride? You chose a shadowy country over the mentor who made you what you are. You brought despair to good soldiers everywhere. You used the pretext of a mission to kill a true hero. Is that what you call loyalty? Answer me! The boss. Well, what do you have to say for yourself? She betrayed America. She stole a Davy Crockett and then defected to the other side. She used an American nuclear weapon to attack Soviet territory. The only way for Washington to prove its innocence to Moscow was to eliminate the traitor themselves. The boss's death was the only thing that could have prevented all-out nuclear war. Is that what you call the truth? It's the truth as it was told to me. So the truth is that you sullied the reputation of your mentor, the woman you love most in this world, before you buried her. It was my mission. Huh. So that's the conclusion you came to in order to live with yourself. What's the boss to you? I'm the one she abandoned when she left this world. I won't rest until I get answers from the woman I loved. You and I are the same. We are the walking dead. <sighs> Would you like to meet her? The boss is gone. Not so fast. You'd like to meet her, wouldn't you? I can arrange it. You took her life. I gave it back. You what? Care for a sniff? It's only snuff. You're a cigar man, aren't you? Well, there's no smoking in there, so if you want to meet her, you'd best partake now. Follow me. This is my baby, my morpho butterfly. It's neither pupa nor cocoon, but an Amar girl. A complete individual in the fullest sense of the word. Is someone there? We have a visitor. I'll introduce him. Don't try anything foolish. As long as we're in here, I can reduce you to carbon at the press of a button. Who are you? A man. A warfighter. Boss. Is that you? I call it the Mammal Part. Mammal Part? For my participation on the project. I demanded access to all information on the boss. Everything the CIA had. Her personal history, military records, physiological data, correspondence, the files for every operation she took part in, every decision she ever made at every possible turn, what she took and what was taken from her, her pain and her pleasure, her joy and sorrow, her life and death. And yes, even you. Why, why would you do that? Coldman sought an MAD-based AI that would deliver an effective retaliatory strike against the most appropriate target in response to a nuclear attack from a hypothetical adversary. An unmanned device to act as a deterrent capable of making the decisions and taking the actions that human beings cannot. I therefore concluded he required a cool calculating machine Program to inflict swift, sure, and utter annihilation upon the enemy. No retaliation. But he took it upon himself to come up with a different answer. He said he needed the thought patterns of the very finest rational mind. One that thought on a global scale, took both past and future into consideration, and reached the best decision, no matter how painful. And that's why you asked for everything they had on the boss. It was the logical thing to do. I knew of only one person who could be entrusted with the fate of the entire human race. What's your real goal here? To clear her name. Why was a legendary hero forced to betray her country? Why was she targeted for assassination by you, her most beloved disciple? I have no use for fabrications. I want the truth. The boss's last will. You must be dying to know yourself. No. 
No. She abandoned her country. Abandoned us all. Really? You think you understand her feelings? You're trying to recreate the boss's last will. Is that it? Why don't you ask her yourself, Jack? Snake, extinguish that noble soul once again, if you can. I taught you all I could. The rest you needed to learn on your own. Techniques, sure. But what about how to think like a soldier? There's a saying in the Orient, loyalty to the end. Do you know what it means? Being patriotic. It means devoting yourself to your country. As long as we have loyalty to the end, there's no point in believing in anything, even in those we love. Soldiers supposed to think. The only thing we can believe in with absolute certainty is the mission. <laughs> I'm defecting to the Soviet Union. Jack, you can't come with us.
side of the enemy, look for the red light. Played me like a piano. Forget about it. You'll get him back. That is, as long as you've got the will to do it. I am not giving up. All right, then. I confirmed the location with Huey. The final testing base for Peace Walker is 15 miles to the north of that lab. It's an underground facility disguised as a rock quarry. All you need to do is sneak in and destroy the AI for good this time. Right. Snake, you can destroy it, right? Yeah. We all have our limits. Actions beyond our abilities. Don't worry. I won't screw it up this time. You're the one who killed the boss. 
Destroying that AI means reliving that memory. It's just a machine. Snake, I'm worried. Worried? For the same reason the CIA entrusted the nuclear launch to an AI. A man can condemn a handful of criminals to the death penalty if they're prepared to assume that responsibility. But who among us could do the same to hundreds of millions of innocent civilians? Who could reduce thousands of years of human history to ash in an instant? Could any flesh and blood human being make that decision? No way in hell. No one man could bear the burden of total genocide. It's what's allowed our cowardly species to survive all this time. But for a machine, willpower is no issue. What are you saying, Kaz? You're a hero, Snake. But you're not a machine. Then I can't destroy that thing. That machine's not the problem. It's that the boss still lives inside of you. Bullshit! She's dead, Snake. It's time to come to terms with that. <sighs> Let me put it another way. You've left everything behind. Your country, your identity, your past and ideals. But there's still one thing you haven't let go of. What are you talking about? The boss. You still haven't let her go. That's why you're so afraid to find out the truth about her. And that's what's holding you back from your future. Snake, she died a decade ago. How long can you live with a ghost? Kaz, I thought I knew everything about her. But I still don't understand what happened to her at the end. There, you're no different from that scientist woman. When she didn't believe me, I realized something. That debriefing I heard could have been part of the cover story they made up. Now, even I'm not sure what her real intentions were. Why did she take that mission? How did she feel about dying? Why was I chosen? You want to know the truth? Ah. The truth won't change the past. You still want to know? No. I took on this mission for a kid who believes in peace. Fine then. There's no point in arguing. Peace Walker is on the verge of completion. Come on, boss. Let's get to that base. Did you, um, give that letter to Dr. Strangelove? Uh, no. Why not? I gave it to you for a reason. It's highly important information. Sorry. I didn't exactly have an opportunity to play postman. Well, next time you see her, you make sure she gets it. Oh, yeah, sure. Better for you if she doesn't. Snake! What? Tell me you didn't read the letter. No, no. You did! I mean, you never know what kind of information could affect the outcome of an operation, right? So... I... So you read the letter, after I specifically told you not to. What do you expect people to do when you tell them not to read something? I thought I knew you, Snake. I thought I could trust you. But now I see I was wrong. <sighs> Look, I'm sorry, but I just don't get what you see in her. Well, I wouldn't expect a barbarian who opens other people's private correspondence to understand. Fine then. Deliver it yourself. Huh? What? No, 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 I, no, no way. I could never... Uh, you've got a long way to go, Huey. How's the horse doing? Not too bad. You'd never know he was over 20 years old. He was hers, after all. Seems like some part of her became a part of him. The platform and the cerebral AI are supposed to be assembled at an underground base disguised as a mine. If my guess is right, both of them have already arrived and are being readied for final testing. Destroying the platform will be difficult. I suggest getting up close and destroying the AI instead. Whatever you do, I'm begging you, don't let my Peace Walker launch a nuke. Hurry, Snake! Peace Walkers in a base due west of your current position. Move out. <laughs>
We just got a report that an enemy soldier managed to hang on to the Fulton Chopper. What's going on down there? The Chopper got snagged by another one. Weird. Wonder how that keeps happening. Wait. Understood. Maintain height alert. Again? Another enemy got hold of the chopper. There's some straw below you. You can dive into it with the action button. Back in the time of the Crusades, members of the Order of Assassins used what is called the Assassin's Straw Box to hide and get close to their enemies. The enemy's here! Drag him inside the box! Commencing attack. Understood. Eliminate all hostiles. <laughs> you can fit up to two people inside an assassin's straw box. <laughs>
Initiate. Hmm. What's the situation? We're waiting on acknowledgement from Reptile. It could be a while. Don't take all night. Ah, Coldman. I'd like to perform one final check. Everyone, take a break. I've got some concerns about the dummy. Now's your chance, Snake. Your body temperature has fallen. 
You're imagining things. Have you come to destroy me? Your pulse has quickened slightly. Just chilly. It's freezing in here. I see. Boss. What is it, Jack? Boss. Is that you? What is it, Jack? Do you have... regrets? Regrets? About your final mission. My final mission? The one in Grosnigrad. I've... never been on a mission there. September 1964. You betrayed the United States, and then... I killed you. I have no record of such a debriefing. Listen to me. I have to know. Did you defect to the Soviet Union of your own free will? There is no mission record matching that description. Ah. Jack. You're not the boss. The boss is dead. Don't do it, Jack. Drop your weapon, big boss. Mammal showed the same response back at the lab. It's a sure sign that you are nearby. It's an honor to meet you again, big boss. I've seen that coyote before. Lobo is the name. Lobo? Smells like a rotting corpse to me. <coughs> I know all about you. Selena Yarsk, ten years ago. You were involved. The operation to eliminate the traitor. I planned the whole thing. Shouldn't a suit like you be back in Langley? What the hell are you doing here? It's what the CIA does best. Ensure people in the know keep their mouths shut, or else pack them off someplace where there's no one to listen. I get it. Trying to claw your way back into their good graces. It's not quite that simple. My aim is a new world order. Detente, the NPT. Salt, TTBT. Ever since the Cuban Missile Crisis, the structure of the Cold War has been coming apart at the seams. A new age is dawning. An age in which Peace Walker, an infallible nuclear deterrent system with the patience and cold logic of a machine, will play a vital role. That's your plan? Assigning humanity's sins to a bunch of machines? <laughs> Quite the romantic. Remember the Cuban Missile Crisis? when the commander of a Russian sub refused an order to launch a nuclear-armed torpedo at an American destroyer. In retrospect, that man was a hero. He saved the world from all-out nuclear war. Humans are incapable of destroying themselves. But an AI wouldn't hesitate to push the button. Precisely. Making it the one real deterrent. People hesitate, lose their nerve. Isn't that why deterrence theory works in the first place? No. Machines don't make mistakes. Only men do. That's why a fully automated, mechanized deterrent, like Peace Walker, is needed. Once our system is embraced, Langley will again turn its attention to Latin America as the cockpit of the new Cold War. Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama. Peace Walker will be deployed along Central America's entire Caribbean coast. All of North America, South America, and the West Indies will be within its range. We'll bring law and order to the entire continent. And you'll still be calling the shots. <laughs> you still don't get it. The age of heroes is over. Buried alongside the boss, and her bankrupt beliefs. From now on, our only heroes will be machines. Surely no one understands that better than you, except perhaps your partner. A deterrent for hire, an army without borders. You've invented a new system too, and an admirable one at that. That's supposed to be an offer. I'm not offering anything. If I'm to sell my new system, you, and yours, have got to go. Wait! Coldman, I have questions for him. Information critical to the completion of the mammal part. 
Give him to me. Hmm. Don't waste too much time. We've just received word that the Salt Two Talks are on schedule. We will launch on time. Snake, you are going to help me resurrect her. Shut up! The boss is dead. Bring him. going to be? Loyalty to your country or loyalty to me? Your country or your old mentor? Your mission or your beliefs? Your duty to your unit or your personal feelings? The only thing we can believe in with absolute certainty is the mission, Jack. <laughs> uh, rise and shine. Coldman's greed does not concern me. I'm only interested in one thing. The truth. I'm a scientist, an AI developer, but not an AI myself. I'm a scientist, and as a scientist, I find this distasteful. You understand? I am a scientist, and I expect answers that make sense. Now. What do you know? Your boss defected from the U.S. taking a Davy Crockett with her, and used it to launch a nuclear strike on Soviet territory. That much I know from the CIA's official debriefing. Did she defect or not? Answer me! Did she or did she not die for her country? She sold us out. My orders were to take care of her. Liar! I want to know the truth! Brace yourself. <laughs> I know that, but what I don't know is your motive. Why would a hero, loyal to the end, betray her country? What really happened? What did you see? She betrayed more than just her country. She betrayed me, too. Then how do you explain that bandana? Why keep a memento of a traitor? What are you talking about? And what about that scar? Don't tell me you have the same scars by sheer coincidence. Don't touch me! Hmm. Decorating your body with her memory. Rather effeminate, if you ask me. <sighs> Answer me! Sacrificed her life for America, didn't she? Sacrificed all for a country that cared nothing for her soul or for her dignity. And you. <coughs> yes, I do hate you. But even you must understand how I feel. I have.
have a right to know what she died for. Why won't you tell me? You're no longer one of Washington's lapdogs. You have no moral obligation to your country. Answer me! Would you see your beloved boss brought back to life? Then say it. Say she died for America. That she remained true to the end. Gave her life for the country that betrayed her time and again. No. That woman was a traitor. Why? For what purpose? She went to her grave, cursing her country. Why? Who is it? What are you protecting? I'm not helping you finish that thing. Face it. The boss is dead. Whatever's inside that machine, it is her. I'm raising the voltage. The next one might kill you! escaped. again. <coughs> Sorry. Hey, you okay? Yeah. My lungs taste like charcoal. No smoking for you for a while, huh? No, I'll be fine. I better get moving. Nice work. What's the situation with you? Everyone okay? Yeah, but there's a slight problem. I can't get a hold of Paz. Paz? I thought the professor was looking after her. So did I. Here's the deal. I started thinking, and I sent someone over to the school the professor mentioned. <sighs> and the school doesn't exist. No, it exists, but Paz has been a no-show. The person at the school said neither the professor nor Paz had been seen there in quite some time. Coleman knew about us. We've been marked by the CIA. The KGB and Paz brought us into all this. Coleman must know about them, too. You think Coleman's got them? No. Remember, Calvez isn't some pencil pusher. Yeah, the KGB will have eyes on Colbin night and day, too. Which could mean they knew what the CIA would try to do and are just staying out of sight. Let's hope so. See what you can do. 
get out of the KGB, Kaz. All right, back to work. I better get moving. Snake, we haven't detected any signs that Peace Walker's been activated, at least from above ground. It's still in the hangar you were in earlier. This time, it's really our last chance. Destroy that AI. On my way. It's too late, big boss. Snake! Pass. At last I found her. The culprit who led you here to begin with. Should have taken care of her back at the supply facility. Snake, don't! The mammal pod is finished. Peace Walker's activation sequence is complete. Finished. With the boss, you were loyal to the end. I'll grant you that. But your silence was exactly the answer I needed. Ten years ago, your mission was to kill her. And her mission was to be killed by you. She fulfilled her duty to America to the very end. Thanks to you, Snake, the final missing piece is now in place. And thus, the boss is restored to life as the mammal part. I thank you. Restored to life? You're crazy! I'll let you in on a little secret, big boss. You see, I've already selected Peace Walker's initial target. An offshore area in the Caribbean. The trade winds will scatter the fallout all over the surrounding region. Crops and fish will die, leaving plenty of free hands to help us mass-produce Peace Walker. Oh, and wouldn't you know, someone's gone and built a pesky little fortress there. Now who would do that? And right in the middle of the target zone, too. Oh well, all the better to test the warhead, CEP. You bastard! I wonder who'll miss a ragtag band of pirates all the way out in the middle of the Caribbean. But first, we're going to prove to the White House that our baby can travel the Caribbean coast on its own. The whole world will know of Peace Walker's versatility. They'll witness the birth of a deterrent that can penetrate both communist and guerrilla controlled territory, traverse any kind of terrain, and deliver a nuke anywhere it needs to go. Untouchable. Unstoppable. The perfect deterrent. The Cold War's days are numbered. Deterrence isn't only about America and Russia now. You know what? You're absolutely right. While we've been wringing our hands, China, France, even India have surpassed us. There's a free-for-all nuclear arms race brewing just below the surface. The nuclear threat will only spread, which is exactly why we must deter it here and now. And the Peace Walker Project is the key. The advent of Peace Walker will bring calm to this restless world. Don't you see, Snake? We need nukes, controlled nukes, to have peace. Lies! Peace Walker will restore order. Order in the form of a new Cold War. But if the world is to understand the genius of our plan, we must launch! Snake! Stop them, Snake! Don't let him get away!
do. Self-defense system online. Self-defense system online. Snake, the pod can outfit it with a self-defense module. Upon detecting attack, it aborts its command and enters small target suppression mode. Right now, Peace Walker's highest priority target is you! Here it comes! System online. Launching S mines. Cluster bombs. Face me. Flame thrower engaged.
Skywalker's estimated top speed on level terrain is 25 miles an hour. Come on, I'll bet you can do at least 30. Haas is on board the Hind 2. I noticed that. She's our client. We have to protect her. Snake, don't let Peace Walker get away! The day is dawning. Go! Yeah! Walker's gone. They've got Paz, too. Yeah, but... Why, Kaz? What would Coleman want with Paz? Paz was with the Professor, i.e. the KGB. Once Coleman discovered that, he figured out what was really going on between Paz and Galvez. He's trying to figure out how the KGB planned to stop Peace Walker. And he thinks he can get the info from Paz. That's crazy. Paz won't know anything. Well, he probably doesn't buy that. You think Galvez has already been killed? By grabbing Paz, Coldman's saying... Stay out of this, or lose your client. Damn it! I can't believe we didn't realize what was going on before we lost contact with Paz. Don't have time for that, Kaz. Snake! Paz needs our help. Right. This isn't about money anymore. You better move. We know where they're headed. Yeah. You can thank Amanda. Snake, that river you chased the Basilisco across is the Rio San Juan. The other side is our country. I had some Nicaraguan compas track it there. They're Focos, from the GPP faction. So we don't work together so much. Where'd it go? West, along the border, towards Lago Cosibolca. There's a U.S. military supply base on the southeastern shore of the lake. Ever since that earthquake two years ago, America's had the entire region to itself. That is where the Basilisco is. 
I'm sure of it. Lago Kosibolka. How do I get across the border? There is a route that we use to cross. It's just a little boat, but I can introduce you to the captain. Mm. I appreciate it. We will never leave Nicaragua at the mercy of someone like William Walker again. Snake, Coldman's going to launch the nuke from that base. He's targeting MSF. Based on what Huey's told us, it'll take two more days to prep for launch. But it looks like there's another reason they picked that date. What's that? Tomorrow is day one of a U.S.-Soviet summit in Vladivostok. The launch is probably connected somehow. That's right. They're holding the SALT-2 talks. You think Coldman's trying to disrupt the negotiations? Hmm. Either that, or use it as a bargaining chip. He's still got paws, too. At any rate, we're running out of time. I'll figure something out. Take the gondola west along the river. When you reach the northern bank, you are in Nicaragua. I've arranged for a guide to get you close. Snake! Chico. Sorry about the horse. He sure was pretty. Life's end. Isn't it beautiful? It's almost tragic. I've been waiting, Snake, for a long time. Boss. There is nothing more for me to give you. All that's left for you to take is my life. By your own hand. One must die, and one must live. No victory, no defeat. The survivor will carry on the fight. The one who survives will inherit the title of boss. Kill me. Kill me now. There's only room for one boss. And one snake. The boss's defection was a ruse set up by the U.S. government. But then something happened that no one could have predicted. Colonel Volgan fired an American-made nuclear warhead at Sokolov's research facility. So the operation itself was greatly expanded and revised. The authorities in Washington knew that in order to prove their innocence, they'd have to get rid of the boss. And that one of their own would have to do the job. The boss wouldn't be allowed to come back home alive. And she wouldn't be allowed to kill herself. Her life would be ended by her most beloved disciple. That was the way that the government wanted it. That was the mission she was given. The taint of disgrace will follow her to her grave. Future generations will revile her in America as a despicable traitor with no sense of honor. And in Russia as a monster who unleashed a nuclear catastrophe. She will go down in official history as a war criminal. That was her final mission. Snake, history will never know what she did. No one will ever learn the truth. Her story, her debriefing, will endure only in your heart. Everything she did, she did for her country. She sacrificed her life and her honor for her native land. She was a real hero. She was a true Patriot. <laughs> Something's not right. Geek guard doesn't look too bad. What do you think? Gonna need some help. <laughs> Did 
This is Snake. Can you hear me? This is Miller. Loud and clear. Got in without a hitch. Good. There's an airfield on the other side of the building, on the northwestern shore of the lake. That's where they'll conduct the launch. There's a communications tower in front of you. I'm betting they'll control Peace Walker from there. Cuz. They're targeting Mother Base. Don't you think you should evacuate? Nah. Everybody here believes in you, boss. <laughs> All right, fine, then. I've kind of gotten attached to the place myself. What about Amanda and her people? They've been taken to safety. We can't involve them in this any further. Good. They've got their own cause to fight for. And Snake. Don't forget the bad guys have got Paz. I won't. We're prepping a few backup units. Don't let them launch, Snake. We're counting on you. See the communications tower to the west? Head for that, Snake. Soviet soldiers on an American base. Something's wrong here. Keep your eyes peeled, boss. <gasps> base is already jam-packed. Lay off the Fulton recoveries until there's more room. Mother base is practically overflowing. Until some of these people leave, further Fulton recoveries can't stop pushing! What's that? Huh. Guess not. Huh. 
What's going on? Rise and shine. about entering the final data. What is the matter? <laughs> they found me. Snake! Gaz! Snake, you okay? All MSFs ready to move out. They're headed your way on the double. Are you serious? There's a skeleton crew manning the base. Everyone else is en route to the base in Nicaragua. Snake, think you can make it to that control tower? Not sure why, but this place is crawling with Russian troops. Gonna have to force my way through. What the hell's going on? Damn if I know. Get over there quick as you can. You're almost there, Snake. Stay steady. Snake. I'm coming, Paz. Do not worry about me. I am an angel of peace. I will be watching over you. Here goes nothing. that's controlling Peace Walker is located to the northeast. Go back east the way you came, then head north from there.
Big boss, you made it. Too late, though. The false data's already in place. False data? That's right. Peace Walker is designed for deterrence, nothing more. She is incapable of initiating a nuclear attack on her own. She will only awaken and attack when it's time to retaliate. Peace Walker is a weapon of peace, after all. First, We'll enter data for an imaginary Soviet nuclear strike on the U.S. homeland. After assessing the data as a threat, Peace Walker will automatically enter retaliation mode, selecting the optimal target from a predefined list. For this scenario, we have reverse engineered the false data so that she'll inevitably end up choosing the Caribbean Sea as her target. You're really gonna do it, aren't you? Know this. Peace Walker's retaliation will be the first and last of the Cold War. It is the only way we will ever come close to achieving true peace. All that is left is to enter the cold. No! Stand down, big boss. You're late. Professor. Professor? Yes, well, taking over the base took longer than expected. <sighs> but I uh, brought the technology. What? You provided the money and land. Center alone could never have accomplished so much in so little time. Zadarnov, you backstabbing son of a- Backstabbing? Correct me if I'm wrong, but were we not enemies all along? Do you really think my comrades were working for the company? Do you truly think we'd faithfully serve a pack of depraved capitalist dogs? What are you going to do? Launch a nuke. Target Cuba. Have you lost your mind? What would you possibly gain? We won't be the ones launching it. You, the Americans, will attack our ally, Cuba. What? Think, Coldman. We're on an American base, eagerly endorsed and supplied by a pro-American regime. What's the international community to think? The world will burn with anti-American sentiment. Communism will spread across Latin America unchecked. Ah! Let the age of deterrence be undone by the deterrent itself. Such is the Kremlin's plan. You son of a bitch! Us, come here. Vladimir Zadornov. And Vladimir means ruler of peace. Now, do as you're told, us. Don't do it! Remember what they did to you at their base on the coast. For what Coldman's done, he deserves nothing less than death. Pause! I I'm sorry! that retribution be delivered by a dead hand. You... you missed on purpose. Your part in this isn't done. I need you to enter the code. Doctor, 
The target is now Cuba. Please make the necessary modifications. And don't even think of resisting. I'll crush you, but only after I crush your beloved first. No! Not that! Cuba is now the retaliation target. Very well. Good. It is done. As for you, big boss, I've been watching you all along. You've performed beyond even my highest expectations. A true commandante. What are you talking about? Hmm. Why do you think I summoned you to Costa Rica? Had you make contact with the Sandinistas? <laughs> A true intelligence operative never gets his hands dirty. Need a revolution? Manipulate the locals into doing it for you. You mean Amanda and the Sandinistas? You've done well. You took a ragtag band of guerrillas, children, and shaped them into a full-fledged formidable army. And now, you'll truly become our century's most complete human being. Shape. Afara? None other. A hero who, gunned down by the CIA, becomes a legendary icon. The Sandinistas will rise up in revenge, overthrowing the pro-American regime and wresting Nicaragua from U.S. hands. And the nuclear strike on Cuba naturally will be the last straw. Mammalport data entry is complete. Dead at age 39. Just like El Che. Ironic, isn't it? In the end, a legend is merely fiction. You'll die as the boss did, and become as did she, an eternal fraud. Go! 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 Dare point your gun at a comrade! We will not be pawns of the KGB. We will win our own victory! Hasta la victoria siempre! Amanda! <sighs> we're home! Look! We're back in Nika! We did it, Amanda! I mean... Comandante! Boss, you hurt. I'm fine. Big boss. 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 You're a regular Joan of Arc. Nonsense. You're the hero here. You saved my life. You're the heroes here. I never figured you for a softy, Snake. Thanks. It's good to see you. Boss can stay with us until she's back on her feet. And the professor? We'll find him a nice, comfy cell. Coldman's lost a lot of blood. He may not make it. Hmm. Where's Amanda? Back with her compass. She'll catch up later. How about you, Snake? I'm not done yet. The AI. I have to finish this. That boss is a fake. I'm gonna bury it. We'll save the champagne until you get back. May as well celebrate peace while it lasts. I didn't bring her back to life because I was forced to. I wanted to know how she really felt. How it really ended. The boss is dead. No, she's alive. Some truths are better left buried. You don't mean that. Be honest. You want to know too, don't you? Whether what you saw and heard at the end was the truth. She'll tell us. I know she will. 
thank you for stopping them. And I'm sorry. I can't imagine how it hurt. I'll live. I'm used to shock therapy. You are? Well, it's very kind of you to say. Let's go meet her, shall we? Get in, boss. Don't pick up a gun unless you know how to use it. Aiming a weapon alone doesn't make it a deterrent. You're the angel of peace. Leave the guns to us. That was our agreement, remember? The army's leaving Costa Rica now. The mission is complete. Thank you. <laughs> What's that noise? What'd he do? <laughs> I should have killed you when I had the chance. Norad's nightmare is about to begin. What? Peace Walker determines retaliation targets based on enemy nuclear strike data. That data can be sent to third parties as well. We got big problems, Snake. Colbin's activated the nuclear launch switch. What? And the target's Cuba? Yeah, but that's not it. The son of a bitch has screwed us all over. When Peace Walker was activated, it started transmitting the false data set to NORAD. It's using a spread spectrum MLF signal. It can't be blacked out. Even by EMP. There's no way to tell the difference between false data and the real thing on a radar screen. NORAD will have no idea it's all a ruse generated by Peace Walker. They'll think it's a real Soviet attack. They'll pass on the data to the National Military Command Center. And Washington will have to choose whether or not to retaliate. This could get ugly. Unless we stop it, we're looking at a retaliatory chain reaction. No! No need to panic. The nightmare will end soon enough. What do you mean? Coldman's aim is for the bureaucrats in Washington to see the importance of a machine like Peace Walker. He's trying to prove that humans don't possess the will to launch nukes. Everything will be fine. They'll never retaliate. They're only human. Kaz, where's the president? Last I heard, he was in the middle of SALT II negotiations in Vladivostok. With the president gone, nuclear launch authority passes to the next person in the chain of succession. The vice president's gone too. So after him comes the speaker. President. Vice president. Not one among them has the courage to push the button. No one willing to enter history as the great destroyer. In the end, it's not their lives that people value most. It's their reputations. The bureaucrats in Washington may not be able to retaliate. Peace Walker, on the other hand. She's loyal to the mission above all. And she's well aware that guaranteed retaliation is essential for nuclear deterrence to work. Peace Walker is the perfect deterrent. Cuba would not have been my choice of targets. But you can't make peace without breaking a few eggs. Now that Peace Walker has the false data, retaliation is inevitable. Are you insane? You think it'll end there? 
You're about to unleash all-out nuclear war. Somebody find out what's going on at NORAD. Mammal's got a connection to NORAD. We could monitor it with the right equipment. I've got you covered. I've got NORAD on the line. Sir, we're tracking unidentified targets. Current apogee, 20 degrees. Estimated time of re-entry is 2250 Zulu. Have you contacted the president? Coverall is not responding. Warning system checks out. No corresponding natural signatures. Data is assessed as reliable. Cut the data transmission. We can't say for sure Washington isn't going to retaliate. The only one who knows the abort code is me. I die. No one can turn it off. Even if they do strike back, I'll already be dead. I can only pray that my theory, my peace, is proven right. Peace. Go to DEFCON 3. Get Zack on the phone. This is Crystal Palace. Stand by for an emergency meeting. They're at DEFCON 3. The false data and the nukes are both coming from the same source. We have to stop Peace Walker. The only way is to destroy her. She's entered launch mode. Peace Walker's rendered her judgment. The target is Cuba. Snake, don't let it launch the nuke.
Continues to track the targets on radar. The SP satellite status is green. Still assessing as reliable. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, a representative of the Secretary of Defense and Congress have arrived at NMCC. You've only damaged the drive system. The data uplink's still intact. We've got 1,500 Soviet ICBMs crossing the North Pole. Target region is confirmed as the west coast of the United States. Go to DEFCON 2. Prepare to launch ICBMs. How do I make it stop? Peace Walker is a fully autonomous system. Unlike the other machines you fought, its command authorities are all located inside its cerebrum, the Mammal Pod. We've got to stop the Mammal Pod. I don't have the abort code either. Coldman was the only one. Snake, destroy the AI inside the Mammal Pod. The inner barrier protecting the Mammal Pod is designed to be as strong as a bomb shelter. What's it going to take to get through? I guess an atomic bomb will do it. You trying to be funny? No, I'm telling you, that armor was designed to withstand a nuclear war. We can't get through to the president. The decision is on us. You can't be serious. There's no way I'm gonna wipe out the human race. This is the president's call. There's no time for that. We need a decision now. Huey, call NORAD. We have to tell them the nukes aren't real. I'll give it a shot. Forget the order of succession. If we're all going to hell, let's take those bastards with us. We have 12 minutes to impact, sir. May God have mercy on our souls. Jesus. Coldman guessed wrong. They're gonna go through with it! The platform sustained a lot of external damage. All we need is some pressure. Pressure? Sink it in the lake! Without much water pressure, even the tiniest crack should be enough to flood the innards. The AI pod is a mass of highly sensitive electronics. Short the contacts and the signal will stop. How much does that thing weigh? 500 tons. It's hopeless. We can't move that thing. Get NORAD on the phone. Incoming MERV warheads have separated. Estimated time to impact now, 11 minutes. Sir, we've got a call. The president? No, sir. Then who? He, um... Spit it out! 
He claims to be Big Boss. Big Boss? Patch him through! Mr. Chairman, I'll get straight to the point. Cancel the retaliatory strike now! What? The radar blips you're seeing are all fakes. No one's launched any nukes. How do you know? The launch data is fake, part of an experiment that leaked. You weren't supposed to receive it. Your radar is showing missiles that don't exist. If you're lying, then we've got ten minutes till we're toast. We have to retaliate or more Americans die. The experiment was planned and executed by the CIA station chief in Central America. Then put him on! He's dead. I can give you his name, though. We need more than the authentication code you gave the switchboard. We need proof you're actually Big Boss. Do you have any? <sighs> All right. If you know the name Big Boss, then maybe you were there at the ceremony when I received the title from President Johnson. Indeed I was. We don't have time for this bullshit! Hold it! Let's hear him out. You were saying? At the ceremony, the DCI tried to shake my hand. I refused. What happened in that room is classified, top secret. Only a handful of people would know. He's making it up! Don't listen to it! Wait! Why did you refuse to shake his hand? Because I knew where my loyalty belonged. Everybody, listen to me! Those Soviet missiles are fakes! What? You're actually going to believe him? He's right! This is some sort of commie trick! No! It's the real Big Boss! Trust me! How can you know for sure? Because I was the Army Chief of Staff back then, and I was standing right next to the DCI when it happened. I saw everything! <clears throat> You saved us all, Big Boss. We'll stand down the alert. <sighs> Thank you. When we meet again, I hope you'll shake my hand. Oh! What are you doing? Sorry, Chairman, but we are not standing down. Damn it! Those worthless sacks of... She's calling to you. Destroy the mammal pod and the data will stop flowing. Please, stop her. I've been waiting, Snake, for a long time. Waiting for your birth, your growth, and the finality of today. Boss. We didn't raise you and shape you into the man you are today, just so we could face each other in battle. A soldier's skills aren't meant to be used to hurt foes. So then, what is an enemy? Is there such thing as an absolute timeless enemy? There is no such thing, and never has been. And the reason is that our enemies are human beings like us. They can only be our enemies in relative terms. The world must be made whole again. The philosophers must be reunited. I will devote my skills to that purpose. And with the Colonel's money, I will achieve that end. Just as I once created the Copas, they are my family. I may no longer be able to bear children, but I still have a family. Fox jumps over the lazy dog. My life. I gave up my life. I now. Do it. There is nothing left inside me now. Waiting for me. For the power I may no longer
Data uplinks bypassing the mammal pod. Put down the gun! Come to your senses, man! The fate of the world, the fate of the Earth is at stake here! Why? I don't understand. Answer me! Tell me why! Answer me! Authority rests with me now. I'm ordering a retaliation! No! Don't! It's the end of us all! Who gives a damn? I'm not gonna sit here and die like a dog! If the Russians are gonna kill my family, destroy my country, I'm taking them with me! You've seen now, Chairman. Deterrence is just a fool's dream! Why? Why won't it stop? Sometimes the body continues to live even after the brain is damaged. The boss AI isn't doing this. I think it's something rather more primitive. Reptile has taken up Mammal's dying wish. No. Stop it. Don't just sit there. Stop it!
When the human brain is damaged, sometimes it recovers over time. Other parts of the brain take over the functions of the damaged parts. Mammal and reptile were patterned after different parts of the human brain. When those parts were assembled together into one, they must have become capable of functional compensation. It's clearly not thinking rationally. It's not using its head. It's using its heart. This is the fate she chose for herself. <sighs> the boss's innocence has been proven. Do you hear it, Snake? Do you hear the boss's song? You saw it, didn't you? When you went to space, that there's beauty outside of battle. At last, I understand. In the end, it was you who put down your gun and chose instead to sing. They can all hear you. I know they can. And your will shall surely live on. That's what you wanted. 
so much that you gave up everything you had. But you couldn't achieve it. Isn't that right? And still, all you can do is sing. There's no peace to be found anywhere. And so, we can only keep on hoping. Hoping for the illusion we call peace. Snake, you still here? Come on. Let's go back. I'm not going back. Huh? I'm done. Snake, you don't mean... I'm done looking for the truth. What are you saying, Snake? I was wrong. Come on, boss. Everybody's waiting for you. She betrayed me, cuz. She what? In the end, she put down her gun. And when she did, she rejected her entire life up to that point, including me. What do you mean? In giving up her life, she abandoned everything she was as a soldier. And you consider that betrayal? I won't make the same choice as her. My future is going to be different. Then. That's right. From now on, call me Big Boss. Got a sex, Snake? What's up? It's about Paz. You know she doesn't have any family. She got a scholarship thanks to Zadornov and was living at the dorms, but he was KGB. All signs are her scholarship came from the KGB too. Even if they let him go, she's not going to be seeing any more money. It wouldn't have been much anyway. So, I was wondering, what about letting her stay here for a while? What does she think? She says she wants to help out. It would only be temporary. She's still in shock. Right now, no one understands her better than we do. Okay, but Kaz, don't take your eyes off her. What do you mean? It won't be easy getting used to this kind of life. I know, Snake. I'm not trying to turn her into one of us. You should talk to her yourself later. Okay. And, uh, Dr. Strangelove wants to come too. Strangelove? Well, she's out of a job now, and she'd have a problem returning to England. You can talk to her about it. Anyway, you don't need me to tell you how good she'd be for R&D. I have a favor to ask you, Snake. Name it. I want you to give me a job here. I want to help out. You sure? 
You just went through a hell of a time. You should probably take it easy until you're settled. Thank you. But there must be something I can do. You would not want me near a gun. But I am a decent cook. Now there's a skill we can use. Put me on the mess hall team. I think I can handle it. Once I get used to it, I will even add in some Costa Rican recipes. Sounds like a plan. My mother was the one who named me Paz. She said it was an expression of her wish that the country stay at peace. It is a pretty common name in Central America. My mother always used to tell me, never make war, always help keep the peace. I remember. Your grandparents. Yes. They died in the Civil War. I think that is why my mother hated war so much. That's another thing you've got in common with Kaz. His mother named him Peace, too. See, si. Because Japan also suffered through war. I think I know how Mr. Miller's mother felt. You like the peace sign, huh? See. Si. As a gesture, it connects every peace-loving person. Here, you try it, Snake. Peace. No thanks. It doesn't suit me. Too bad for you. You know, the V in the peace sign comes from the V in victory. When did it start standing for peace? I am not completely sure, but I guess it came out of the protest movement against the Vietnam War. Oh, and do not turn your hand around when you do it. Especially around British people. It is insulting. So, you live alone now? No, not alone. I've been living in school dormitories since I started junior high. After my mother died, my relatives took me in, but they were not my real family. You didn't fit in there? In a way. My aunts were kind to me and all. But I know how difficult it must have been to suddenly have a child thrust into their lives. When you live with someone, there are no secrets. I could tell my being there was a burden on them. Hmm. Sounds like a rough childhood. I would not say that. I was lucky just to have people take me in. There are huerfanos living out in the streets because their mothers died. It is even worse in countries with frequent civil wars. So, who am I to complain about my childhood? You're a pretty tough kid, you know. Not at all. I am not strong at all. Snake, we fitted Zeke with its own AI pod. We were having trouble adjusting the AI, but Dr. Strangelove was able to get it up and running. Strangelove? Why the surprise, Snake? Whoa, we're an army without borders. We need a deterrent against foreign intervention. That's what Zeke is for. It may even prove necessary to... I'm not against deterrence itself. The problem is when a nation comes to rely on it. All that does is force a burden on its people. The same people that constitute the nation itself. The existence of nations is detrimental to man. That's why I, one without a nation, see potential in MSF. But power is required for you to distance yourself from nations. I will do whatever I can to assist with that. Glad to hear it. And... I merely lent Huey a helping hand. I will not give Zeke an AI like hers. I wouldn't expect you to. Why'd you agree to come here, to Mother Base? You intrigued me. Me? Hold on. You're not planning on modeling your next AI after me. Not a bad idea, but I have no intention of ever again attempting to transplant human thought into machines. Oh. That's a relief. You are the man who inherited the boss's will. You're gathering people around you, even now, shaping them, building a new organization. I'd like to see how it turns out. You're not planning to go back to AI research? I never said such a thing. Of course my work will continue. Here? In my eyes, the growth of MSF as an organization is analogous to the development of the nervous system. The way you become intertwined, stimulate each other, branch out in new directions. It's really quite inspirational. Interesting way to put it. Of course, I intend to repay you for your hospitality. The fruits of my research will be at your disposal. Why not assign me to the R&D team? I promise you won't be disappointed.
Strange love. Is that a code name? No, just a nickname. Don't tell me you don't recognize it. From Kubrick's Dr. Strange Love, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. It's a film that came out in 1964. A dark comedy about the absurdity of nuclear deterrence. You were in a movie? No, stupid. I got my nickname because of that movie. Why? Because you look like the doctor in the movie? No. That Dr. Strangelove was a man. So? Back when I was at ARPA, I kept a photo of the boss on my desk. I was totally engrossed in my research and showed no interest in the opposite sex. Plus, I had a photo of a woman on my desk. The fools around me turned it into a cruel taunt, calling me strange love. Even for a bunch of shut-ins who never went out to the cinema, that title seemed to ring true with them. Anyhow, in their eyes, homosexuality was something strange. They were incapable of seeing things outside the lens of their own standards. Being strange means you have your own unique point of view. I rather considered it an honor. So, you were with ARPA before you came here, huh? Yes. Back then, it was really the only place I could make a living from my AI research. And before that? I started out at NASA. That's where I met her. When Boss went into space? Yes. It was that incident that turned me away from aerospace engineering. Space is entirely too hazardous a place for human beings. That was why I felt an immediate need to develop AI. As it turned out, rockets later became much safer and mankind reached the surface of the moon. In any event, it was a hollow Cold War victory. When you get down to it, a nuclear missile is just a rocket with a nuclear warhead strapped to it. Thus, taking the initiative in the space race was tantamount to a military show of force. But the budgetary strain was too big for Washington or Moscow to handle. Yes, and then there was the Cuban Missile Crisis and the Vietnam War, and then came detente. Having leapt ahead of the Soviet Union with its moon landing, America shut down the Apollo program in 72. It was around then that ARPA was downsized and renamed DARPA, the D standing for defense. With few prospects for continuing my AI research, Coldman's invitation was a godsend. It was also a chance to have them collect data on her. The end result being this mess. But we did learn something valuable from her. The nobility of peace. You know, that ID card I got from Huey wouldn't let me into the lab. Of course not. I deactivated it. Why? As though I'd let him into my lab. Oh, you don't seem to care for him much, even though you two are in the same field. Oh, please. For starters, I can't stand that wishy-washy attitude of his. If he's got something to say to me, he should be a man and come say it in person, not write some furtive letter. But if his card doesn't work, how's he supposed to... And another thing, the way he always demeans himself, every other sentence begins with, I could be wrong, but... Why can't he just do what he does and be confident about it? Well, there was the thing about his dissertation being plagiarized. The real problem is, he doesn't have a wit of independence in him. In Costa Rica, and even back at NASA, he was always following people around, asking if there was some way he could help. Why doesn't he stop his whining, take a stand, and face up to me? I think I know how he feels. And to top it all off, he seems to enjoy referring to himself by that nickname I gave him. I simply don't get it. How can he be so submissive? So, Huey was a nickname you gave him. That's right. I took it from the name of a drone in the science fiction film Silent Running. Drone? It's a type of worker robot. The way he follows people, just waiting for them to boss him around, is so similar. I couldn't help myself. Oh, it's an American film directed by Douglas Trumbull, the man who did the special effects for 2001 A Space Odyssey. Imagine that. A scientist who likes science fiction. And that's not all. There's more. He's a man. Um, <coughs> Hang on. I seem to remember you saying he should be more of a man. Yes. Well, he is an awfully good scientist. Without his reptile pod, my mammal pod wouldn't function, just as the cerebrum can't exist without the cerebellum and the brainstem. He did a fine job of designing it. I'll give him that. Huh. 
That sounded suspiciously like praise. Ah, uh, it's merely an objective observation. I like people who possess the will to move forward. I have no time for those who refuse to take control of their lives. Until he does, my opinion remains the same. So, you and Cecile seem to be enjoying yourselves back at that lab. What are you insinuating? I only kept her because I didn't want our secret to be known. And the personal baths? You could have left her in there alone and locked the door from the outside. Yes, that, well, she seemed anxious, so I... Now, why would she be anxious? She was beautiful. I was only admiring her beauty. She was terrified. I never meant her any harm. She knew that. I know she did. But she felt like she was in enough danger to run away. No matter what I did, if Coltman found her, she would have been... You're right. The truth is, I wanted to save her. But not if it meant forestalling the completion of Mammal. So you made it easy for her to escape? Do you really think I am that soft? I'll admit security wasn't exactly tight. It wouldn't have been difficult for her to escape from the building. Seemed like she had a rougher time after she got out. At any rate, I never did anything to her to deserve any blame. Is that clear? Okay, okay. I believe you. How's Paz doing? Okay so far. Still shocked about being lied to by Zadornov. But she's actually getting along great with the crew here at Mother Base. Really? That's good to hear. Still, it's got to be depressing for a girl her age to be cooped up on an offshore plan all day. Even if it is only temporary. I bet she'd love it if you took her out somewhere once in a while. Kept you waiting, huh? No, it is okay. You're pretty good. Really? Oh, I am so happy. <laughs> ah! Where are you going? Sorry, I just. No, it is okay. Say good night. Good night. <sighs> Snake, your beard hurts. What exactly do you plan on doing, boss? I said no. Cut that out. What are you going to do now? Snake, your beard hurts. What a terrible thing to do to a lady! I said no! Snake! What do you think you're doing to pass? Snake, your beard hurts. What, may I ask, is your reason for doing such a thing to her? I said no! What are you planning to do to her? Here I am. What are you doing like that? Did you come here to swim? 
It is too dangerous. I feel the power with Stay away from me. Guess it's time to launch some fireworks. You've got quite a body. Thanks. Do not come any closer. I'm going in. <gasps> Start talking. I am not hiding anything from you. Start talking. Honest. You have to believe me. Start talking. My name is Pass. I love peace. Start talking. Honestly, I... Start talking. Ugh, this hurts. Let me go. Start talking. I, I stole some rations at Mother Base. <laughs> Creep. Preparations for Metal Gear Zeke are complete. We can activate it any time. Got it. Thanks, Huey. No need to thank me. At least now I can finally say I helped you with something. There's something I need to discuss with you, boss. Get to the point, Kaz. We recovered the nuclear warhead that was loaded onto Peace Walker from the bottom of Lago Kosibolka. What? Warheads are radioactive, even if they're relatively stable. If we just left it there, it would contaminate the lake, or fall into the hands of terrorists. Creating another crisis. Right. So while the White House is figuring out how to cover its ass, I thought we'd take some precautions. What did you have in mind? Load it onto Zeke. What? What else would we do with it? Zeke is our deterrent. To protect ourselves from nuclear attack, we need a nuclear weapon ourselves. Ah. Uh... Of course, if you're not on board, we could always dispose of it. But it won't be easy getting another nuke. This is a golden opportunity. We could always get rid of it later. Load it onto some fishing boat and leave it out in the middle of the ocean. No one would ever know it's there. But if you want to get rid of it, boss, we'll get rid of it. No. Don't. As long as there are nukes out there, we need one ourselves if we're going to be a world power. I knew you'd see it that way, boss. So as long as we stand apart from nations, we need something to put us on equal footing. In a way, MSF is a country itself, and we just became the world's seventh nuclear power. Nuclear power... Snake, we've got a problem. Zadornov's not in his cell. What? He must have used his prosthetic as a blowtorch to cut through the bars, but we've managed to narrow down his location using a transmitter we planted on him. I'm adding a new mission. Find the KGB agent Zadornov. Target practice, huh? When you're done, head over to the exit. <laughs> Big boss. Zadornov. I had to kill him. Huh. So much for a fugitive. Something's not right here. I'm thinking he had a friend. Someone inside MSF. Huh? What's going on? 
It's Zeke. It's moving. What? There's somebody inside. I can see them. Snake, get up here. Pronto! Myself, all right. My true self. Cause, shut that thing down. I can't. The controls aren't responding. Then how's it moving? I made some modifications. This machine was meant to have a human pilot. Modifications. What are you- Never thought I'd be into machines, huh? Then Zidorinov's escape was a diversion. Paz, what are you doing? I'm taking it back. Taking it back? Where? To our leaders. To Cypher. Cypher? This weapon is Cypher's creation. Paz, get down from there! Do not call me that. I am Pacifica Ocean. My name, my age, my mission. Cypher gave them all to me. My entire life has but one purpose. To carry out Cypher's plan. The nasty tobacco. The angel of peace crap. The whole teen with a dream routine. I am through with all of it. Pause. You can't. I told you not to call me that. It makes me want to puke. Project is finally about to reach its goal. The real project. Once upon a time, there were two young men who idolized a hero called the Boss. One day, they suddenly lost the point of origin. This cipher that was like a mother to them. Unable to come to terms with their sorrow, they each decided to carry on the will of their hero. But they could not agree on what that meant. In the end, they became bitter enemies, and the zero from which they both started was split into two. Huh. And you have been on the wrong path ever since. There is no happily ever after waiting for you in the end, unless... You obey the will of Cypher. Where does an army without borders call home? A state without borders, of course. A world without borders. A world without borders? The Cold War order is about to collapse. The age of electronic intelligence is about to begin. The NSA, CSS, NRO, DIA, etc., etc. The intelligence community that is long bickered amongst itself will be united in a world governed by electrons. Cypher will gather all information, watching over the world and guiding the will of its people, all while they remain blissfully unaware. There will be no one to oppose them. For the first time, the world will be ruled by a single will. Until the new order is in place, you and your army will be the force that protects it. You will be Cypher's deterrent, pulling the wool over the eyes of the old order with your charisma and military prowess. Accept our offer, and we will allow you to retain control of MSF and Zeke. That's an offer. The boss threw down her gun, and with it, her life's call. You, her disciple, have never been able to do that. You are too afraid to let go. I was made to fight. I am a gun. Is that so? Then what do you call this? Is it a gun too? You are a lousy liar. Admit it. This thing is a monstrosity. A product of your own fear. 
But not Cypher. Cypher thought of something different. Cypher's going to control guns. Control guns? That is right. Not deter. Control. It is the ultimate approach to the illusion of peace. Control power. You're gonna be disappointed. Then we are done. We are done. Thank you for playing. Better luck next time. The offer is rescinded. And now the ultimatum. Zeke is already in nuclear strike mode. What? I'm taking the weapon you built and using it to launch a nuclear strike on the east coast of the United States. You're insane. What are you after? But wait. Here is your consolation prize. We are about to show the world just how dangerous a gang of outlaws, an army without borders, can be. You and your men will become pariahs, and you will be wiped off the face of the earth. Rather than heroes, you will be seen as a well-armed extremist cult prone to indiscriminate outbursts of nuclear aggression. You will give rise to a new world order, an age of deterrence defined by its fear of extremist cult influence. Do you like the picture I am painting? Big Boss. When all is said and done, peace is nothing but a fantasy. A game is a game. You either win or you lose. All you can do is fight. Stop me if you can. The peace sign is the V of victory. Say, peace?
would have thought that little girl was working against us? Tell me about it. She had everybody fooled, me included. I can't believe I didn't pick up on anything. Snake, there's no point in beating yourself up over the past. But hey, maybe you should put in some practice against Zeke in case this sort of thing ever happens again. In any case, I need to go talk to Dr. Strangelove. Zeke still isn't ready. Huey! How's it going? How does Zeke look? The attitude control AI had a backup, so it should be able to walk. Really? Well, that's good. Beyond that, it's up to the creator. Stop! Don't come any closer, Doctor. There's... something I've been meaning to ask you. Do you... do you despise me? Doctor, are you asking me out? No, no. <laughs> Not at all. I... No? Hmm. Pity. Because I've just had my heart broken by someone else. What? I only like those who can stand on their own. If you fancy me, then come walk with me. Who knows what miracles might happen. Love is blind after all. Take your time. I'll be waiting. That name Poss mentioned at the end, Cypher, it's a code. It means empty. It also means... Zero. A world of electronic intelligence, built on codes. And at the center of it all, a zero. Cause... Uh, look boss, I owe you an apology. Hear me out, okay? <sighs> sure. I, uh, knew Paz and the Professor. I knew who they really were all along. Cause... I used them. I suppose you were the one that brought them to Columbia in the first place, huh? Guilty as charged. Paz wasn't just CIA, you know. She was working for the KGB, too. And for this Cypher group. In other words, she was a triple agent. You knew all of this? Wait, let me finish. Listen, MSF never would have gotten this big if it weren't for them. This mercenary business we built, someday it's gonna be a new driving force in the world economy. <sighs> Is that your goal all along? The Cold War is not gonna last forever. Sooner or later it's gonna give way to an era of regional conflicts and terrorism. A paradigm shift from counter-communism to counter-terrorism. In the new age, Armies won't be tied to states, and war will become a business. We'll be a valuable commodity. There'll be clients all over the world who need our services. MSF is only the beginning. What we're creating here is a revolution in itself. Am I right? Cuz... It's not going to be that easy. What do you mean? This whole Peace Walker thing has left our mark on the history of the Old Order. We've put ourselves on the radar of intelligence agencies and governments east and west. The whole world probably knows about us now. Including that Cypher outfit. We've let ourselves interfere with the times, with the Cold War system of deterrence. We're an army without a flag. 
We weren't supposed to take sides in international affairs, but we did. I see your point. So what happens to us now? We'll be hunted. Not everybody's gonna be happy with us, huh? You're damn right. We upset the global military balance of power. And these people would rather our army without borders not exist at all? They're gonna come knocking real soon. There's no turning back now. We are a wrench in the old system of deterrence. As long as the times refuse to change, we're gonna make a hell of a racket. Then who are we gonna fight? The establishment. Anybody who tries to restore the old balance wants to snuff us out of existence. Which establishment? It won't be a particular country or ideology that hunts us. Who then? We are gonna be fighting the biggest beast of all. The Times. Ten years ago, the Times rejected the boss and killed her. And now, we are the ones being tested. Will the Times erase us? Or work with us? It's gonna be a lonely battle. No good or evil. No winners or losers. Business will have to wait. The question we have to ask ourselves now is, can we survive long enough to see the 21st century? I'm with you, boss. We'll see how it turns out, together. Take our countries. We will leave our motherlands behind us and become one with this earth. We have no nation, no philosophy, no ideology. We go where we're needed, fighting not for country, not for government, but for ourselves. We need no reason to fight. We fight because we are needed. We will be the deterrent for those with no other recourse. We are soldiers without borders, our purpose defined by the era we live in. We will sometimes have to sell ourselves and services. If the times demand it, we'll be revolutionaries, criminals, terrorists. And yes, we may all be headed straight to hell. But what better place for us than this? It is our only home, our heaven, and our hell. This is our heaven. It's 
me. Smoothly? Naturally? No. Big Boss doesn't know the truth. No, Langley hasn't decided what to do yet. Their hands are full with their own mess. True. Lubyanka is in the same boat. Yes. Other eyes continue to watch, but no sign of contact so far. Exactly. It's a non-state army to use however they want. They've probably decided there's no sense in wiping them out just yet. Better to make use of them. Indeed they have. There's a site near Angola. And we fully validated the AI as well. Agreed. In the end, a machine is just that. A machine. Sigan was right. It seems it's time for a change in approach. Machines are best suited to specialize in high-level data processing. Yes, of course. Speaking of which, any news on the suns? Two. Already. Really. But they're strictly an insurance policy, yes? Hmm. So that's the idea. I wonder how Big Boss will respond. Yes, but I'm only interested in the business angle. Like I said before, I'm neither an enemy nor an ally. I'm merely a business partner. Don't forget it. Yes, I'll be in touch. My dear Zero. Snake, legend has it, a place called Isla del Monstruo is near Costa Rica. Isla del Monstruo? It was discovered in the 18th century by Caribbean pirates sailing over to the Pacific. And the island in Treasure Island is based on one near Costa Rica, too. Ah, Treasure Island. I remember reading that. You've read it, too? Ah, oh, that makes things easier. In Nicaragua, we, too, have a story about a group of pirates that encountered a flying monster out at sea. Some even say they landed on this monster island, though we still don't know exactly where it is. That's the reason I've always wanted to come to Costa Rica. Ha! <laughs> I see. Ooh, ooh, I heard another story about a talking cat that lives somewhere in Costa Rica. They say it'll take you to this place. Oh, mm, interesting stuff. Want to know more about the island? Maybe later. If I'm headed that way, you can fill me in. Okay, just let me know. You see some sort of weird animal over by the pier? So if you need someone to go monster hunting with you, find someone else.
Sounds perfect. Chico, I, uh, I met that talking cat. The legendary Trenya? Really? Trenya, yeah, that's what it called itself. Is it famous? In certain circles, yeah. I'm still having trouble believing it. I never thought I'd be talking to an animal one day. What a world. Amazing you could understand his language. Uh, picking up the local lingo is one of the basics of intelligence work. That's what makes you the boss, boss. Hey, say something in Trenya's language, will you? Uh, meow. Uh, meow. Uh, meow, meow, meow. Wow. I have no idea what you're saying. Of course you wouldn't. So, so what did Trenya say? Uh, it said it would take me to that island you talked about. <gasps> really? Oh, oh, take me to a bus, please, please! I know you must be excited, but we don't know what's out there. Could be dangerous. I'll scout it out first. Ah, no fair. Come on, Chico. This isn't as cut and dry as you think. You can come next time, depending on what I find. I'll take some photos if I get the chance. Sorry, kid, but that's life. Apparently, there are other cats that talk besides Trenya on Isla del Monstruo. There's more of them? Yep. They're called the felines. But supposedly they don't ever come to Costa Rica. You should try talking to them if you spot them. Who knows what kind of stuff they have to say. Yeah, just when you think things can't get any crazier. Also, the felines are nice to humans. So you be sure and be nice back. Don't you go attacking them or anything. I would never hurt a defenseless little kitty. I used to have this book full of pirate lore. It had the story about Rathalos, king of the skies. Most accounts describe it as a dragon with wings, or a wyvern. A wyvern? A two-legged dragon. Vlad the Impaler's coat of arms had one on it. Yeah, and he was a model for Count Dracula. There are reports of ships being attacked out in the middle of the ocean. So Rathalos must be able to fly great distances. And what's more, Rathalos is said to breathe fire. Breathe fire? An animal like that can't possibly be real. We're talking about a monster, Snake. Forget what you think you know. It's about time. Let's go, Trenya.
You can use it to roast food, even rations, simply by pressing the action button. To stop roasting, press the action button one more time. also saw little dinosaurs running around the island. Velocipres? Yup. As you'd expect, they're very nimble, but no match for a firearm. You wouldn't want to get surrounded by them, though. I'll bet. Nobody wants to be outnumbered in battle. Right. Your best move would be to make sure they cannot encircle you. Well, stealth is the basis of all solo sneaking missions. While it makes battle tougher, working alone has its advantages when it comes to infiltration. That's what makes you the boss, boss. You don't need any advice from me. Not bad for an old-timer, eh, Chico? <laughs> nope. Still, be careful. Tigrex is a flying dragon just like Rathalos. But it's good at moving around on land, too. It can blast you with rocks from a distance or rush at you with incredible speed. People have seen it on land? See, si. It's said that these two lady pirates, Anne and Mary, visited Isla del Monstruo. It was there that they did battle with Tigrex. Anne was quite a marksman, wasn't she? Must have been a heck of a battle. I wish I'd been there. You know, I'm not so bad with guns myself. I've already seen how good you are.
mistake. Have you heard the legend about the dinosaur that came back to life as a zombie and attacked people? Zombie? You mean the living dead? Yeah. Dinosaurs may be extinct, but technically it would be possible for one to come back to life as a zombie. Not so fast. Dinosaurs were real. Zombies, not so much. What are you talking about, boss? Zombies have been used as slaves on Haitian plantations for years. In Haiti? They've handed down a secret zombie powder for generations. Really? People from long ago must have used that same stuff on dinosaur remains. But dinosaurs had been extinct for millions of years before the first humans. That hypothesis has to be wrong. In any case, the zombie was incredibly powerful. Its name was Gear Rex. They say nothing could kill it. Some say its bodily fluids would burn right through your flesh. Then the spines that fell off his back would impale you. The pain made even worse by the deafening roar rattling every bone in your body. You sure it wasn't just some really strong monster? Who knows what kind of dinosaurs were out there? We could be talking about something strong enough to resist small arms fire. Are you afraid of zombies, boss? No, I just find the whole thing hard to believe.
You're not gonna believe this. Suddenly we got a gear rex on board Mother Base, and it's raising hell up on the deck. I don't know what we did to piss it off, but this is the biggest crisis in MSF's history. We need you to hunt it down and save our outer heaven. <laughs>